It's number 874. This episode brought to you by Scott Evest, uh, which are clothes for pretty much all of your gadget carrying needs. So the, the clothes look great, and they are specially designed to carry all of your stuff hands-free inside. There's a pocket for everything you need to carry, your phone, your tablet, your headphones. Uh, you have a, a, a pocket for wallet. You even have a pocket for a laptop, uh, sunglasses, anything you have. I mean, we've effectively... In our glorious age of technology, have all become like uh, the junk lady from Labyrinth, <laughs> where we just—I know when I carry, when I travel, my bag basically just looks like a cross between like a Radio Shack and a CVS. It's just like a lot of wires and gadgets, and then also, you know, uh, Tylenol and uh, maybe uh, you know Mucinex and maybe uh, Pepto Bismol, which you should always carry if you travel. But uh, Scotty Vest will give you pockets for all that stuff. So for a limited time. Enter the promo code NERDIS for an extra 20% off at scottevest.com and use the promo code NERDIST. 20% off. There you go. Here's the Nerdist Community Corkboard. Say, uh, I am hosting uh, Red Nose Day on NBC. This will be a three-hour block of programming on Thursday, May 25th. Uh, at 8 o'clock, there's a celebrity American Ninja Warrior that's all uh, uh, done up for Red Nose Day. And then there's a special edition of Running Wild with Bear Grylls and Julia Roberts uh, for Red Nose Day. And then I'm hosting a live broadcast from uh, 10 to 11 Eastern Time. And uh, it's live. We're going to be taking donations, and we have guests. Uh, a lot of super fun guests uh, will pop in and out of the show. You got your uh, Ben Affleck, your your Jack Black, your Brian Cranston, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm hosting it, so it should be really fun. So please, please, please watch. Donate. Red Nose Day is an incredible cause uh, for kids. Helps children in poverty, both in the United States and abroad. And uh, it's legendary in England, and it's a third year here in America, and, and have already raised. Um, you know, I, I think hopefully this year we can see if we can get the total to about a hundred million dollars, uh, stateside. So, uh, please watch that NBC Thursday night, May 25th. And, uh, also Reddit user Pez Dispenser writes this. My wife's been a professional wedding portrait and event photographer for the past 12 years. She has a passion for touch, uh, teaching creativity and photography, became a faculty member for the photography school she graduated from, has toured the country teaching workshops. A month and a half ago, she started a YouTube channel to teach and give tips to inspire anyone who's interested in photography to get out, see the world in new ways, and shoot. She's energetic, hilarious, contagiously happy. I would love if she got the attention she deserves. Her website is Get Crafty Photographers, and her YouTube channel is uh, YouTube.com, Get Crafty Photographers. Different than um, the Rick and Morty Get Swifty Photographers. Get Crafty Photographers. Uh, so that's for Pez D. Spencer. Uh, also, I believe this is... Is this I Am Burfunk? Uh, if I messed up your name, I'm sorry. You know, some of these are like reading license plates. Uh, hey, nerds community, my cousin is combining science with art by making psychedelic prints out of topographical maps. Oh, that's an amazing idea. This company is called Beatnik Prints. They use uh, brightly colored maps to make an assortment of home decorations and clothing. He started a Kickstarter to get some uh, up and running and fully functioning. Uh, there might be some nerds folks who would get a kick out of it. Check out beatnikprints.com. Uh, or search Beatnik Prints on Kickstarter. Fantastic. This episode is my old pal Bill Burr, who is promoting the new season of F is for Family, premiering May 30th on Netflix. He also has uh, Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast, which you should listen to. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is his third time. Third time! A three-peat, if you will. That's sportsy terminology, because uh, Bill likes sports. Um, this episode also brought to you by Stamps.com. Uh, save time and money. Grow your business. Look professional. Uh, you can mail any letter package using your computer, your printer, mail carrier, picks it up. No more post office. Don't you want convenience and reliability and ease and flexibility? I want those things for you. Stamps.com brings all the service of the post office right to your fingertips. Um, it's easy. They'll send you a digital scale, automatically calculate the exact postage, uh, and they'll even help you decide the best class of mail based on your needs. No need to lease an expensive postage meter. Uh, right now, you can enjoy the stamp service with a special offer, which includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale without long-term commitments. Go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in the promo code NERDIST. That's stamps.com into the promo code NERDIST. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Here's the NERDIST podcast number 874 with Bill Burr. Katie, uh, please roll the thing. Now entering NERDIST.com. Welcome back, 
back to the podcast, Bill Burr. I can't believe I ran into you the other night. I've never run into you in Los Angeles before. I don't think it, ever, I, unless ever. outside of a comedy outside club. Outside of a comedy club. Yeah. Just at a yeah, restaurant. My, yeah, my parents were in town and uh, visiting their their new uh, granddaughter. So we had a uh, we had an awesome time, and uh, you know there was. I had this major anxiety of them coming out and everything because you'll always have that like, you know, oh, did I do a good job? Was I – am I a success? <laughs> oh, the parents. Yes. <laughs> am I worthy of you guys throwing your youth away? And uh, <laughs> then I just realized like they're not coming out to see – I mean they want to see me, but they're coming out to see my daughter. So it's just like, oh, and I was joking on my podcast. It's like, oh, I'm just opening. I'm hosting. Yeah, you're hosting. Yeah, yeah, yeah my, my daughter's closing it. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, everything. It's, it's oh. so funny though that you still feel that you still feel that it's like – how many nights in a row can you sell out a, the Wilbur Theater to feel like, hey, I think I, I think I'm on to something here. I feel like maybe I'm doing it. Yeah, you know, but because you don't, I don't know. I don't feel any different. That's basically it. You know, there's some people that, that are the exact opposite. First time they get a laugh, they're like, dude, I'm like semi-famous. I'm crushing it. I'll be on a bus. You know, there's that person who just, and those people, you know, God help them when it when it goes bad because they they go just as far down the other way you know right. th- that that you know that up and down thing i don't do that i just kind of look at it like yeah you know, i fooled them again <laughs> you know there's always that thing as you're walking there you're peeking out of the curtain did anybody show up all right we're having a show let's let's do it so i guess it depends on why you do it like do you like doing stand-up or do you like being famous and maybe there's kind of a mixture of Right. There's a dash of something and a little bit of something else for well, I love doing stand up and then the whole fame thing is uh I'm at a cool level, you know, people don't bug me. But uh I also think like to be honest, like what, what fame was when I started in ninety two and what it is now is completely different. Right. Back then it was just like I mean, I don't know I don't I don't know my I there wasn't all these cell phone cameras and blogs and social media and just every fucking thing you did. Like I saw this poor bastard. He tried to be like, hey, man, going on tour. And he had a picture of him standing in front of like a private jet and a car and all that <laughs> shit. And then he got on a commercial flight and someone followed him on Instagram, took a picture. That was Bow Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I wasn't trying to out the guy. But what? I mean, everybody well, everyone, knows. It was a I know, story. I know, I know, story, I know. Yeah. But I felt bad for the guy. Yeah. He's just like so much of it is like, you know, is is like like that level of shit now that like. You never got busted. Like you didn't have to show that you were living that lifestyle. Everybody assumed you did. Now you got to have that lifestyle. If you don't, you got to fake the lifestyle. And and uh, then everybody's like, uh, I don't know. Everybody's like telling on everybody. If I if I followed Bow Wow on Instagram and then I saw him tweet the, and then on on, on uh, uh, Instagram or whatever, and then I saw him on the fly, I'd be like, oh man, I'd feel bad for the guy. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't want to try to like. Yes, I know, but I, and I, I, I hear what you're saying. There's, everybody I, wants their feet held to the fire until it's their feet. Absolutely, give me a fucking break. Whatever. Absolutely, but I also nobody think, ever exaggerated. No, I know, but it's all, but but also, I mean, it it is a if people recognize you, it is a bold move to to suggest this is what I am doing. If you know that people might recognize you, I mean, I, I, I guess I always just think, you know, make a joke out of it. Just take a picture of like the American Airlines and go getting on the private jet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. then it's funny. Then it's funny, and no one, no one, I don't I know. know. Whenever I see that shit, I'm like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> but it is the, you know, but 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 it is, you know, it's also our fault for posting shit every day and trying to let people in and trying to go, this is, you know. Absolutely. So, but I can still feel bad for somebody. Yeah, like, I did. Like I felt bad, too. That's also like a dude who's like, he was like a child star and shit. Like, yeah. Who yeah. was really sitting there thinking at the age he was putting out albums, like, how do I top my last album? Right. I always have to feel there's adults behind that. Oh, 100%. So he's still trying to figure out who the fuck he is and yeah. all this stuff. And everybody's like coming at him, probably saying, oh, you used to do this. Now you're doing that. So now he feels that he has to do that that and then he gets shit on anyways <laughs> it's um not, it's yeah it's like no matter what you do <laughs> no matter what you do it, yeah, you, it, that, that's the internet no matter what the you internet do is you, the you're, world's you're, largest hole poking machine yeah you're gonna get shit on it doesn't matter what it is you will always get you could whatever achievement you feel like you yeah but dude was, what was up with that tie though <laughs> yeah, exactly. what? but that tie though <laughs> Then they'll fucking take your head and stick it on something else. And it's always like – and you know who does it? Those people who have that little egg for a picture and like two followers. It's like, you fucking pussy. You just, you just started this account to do this. Um, and the, the, I, Dude, I've had fantasies of, of finding 
finding the fucking people. Like I've, I've literally on like some of the shit that people say. And, uh, you know, that's what's funny. Like sometimes when, when you, you're listening to uh, people, you know, it's so hard for women to do that. or It's so hard for this. But it's like, dude, everybody, everybody's getting tra- – if you're on the internet, you're sitting on a dunk. Everyone store. getting shit. But, but also, you know, your, your comedy voice, there's almost like this Newtonian – Equal and opposite reaction because you you know I don't know what that means. You have very it's so okay. Is that neutrons? No. You going you going molecular here? No, I mean right in word? a way, in a way, it's just basic physics. So like, it's <laughs> yeah, there's a little shade there. It's it, just basic <laughs> physics. But uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, the, just, it's the equal and opposite <laughs> reaction to like you're creating momentum because your comedy voice is ag- aggressive at times. You are making strong statements about things. You're making a... You're, it's like you are taking a stand about express stuff. express my ideas loudly. Yes. And so <laughs> people feel like, oh, it's okay to come back at him like that. Or maybe that's how he communicates. Or maybe... Are you going to make excuses for everyone on the internet through this? I mean, some... <laughs> can, 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 are they ever held accountable? Is it always like, well, that's his fault for getting on a stage? I'm not blaming you. I, I, I'm just saying... I'm saying understand... Because... A lot of times I feel like – and seriously. I think – I got to be honest with you. I think everybody right down to companies should be aggressive. You should be aggressive with these people on the internet. You should go right back at them. You poke them back even harder. You find out where they live. You just give them – you got to – because it's the bully mentality. You go right back at them or you kill them with silence. You, you just figure out a strategy. But you got to have like a strategy. But these people who are like – you know. When people don't do shit and then they have to apologize for something that you know somebody else misunderstood, then the second you apologize, you're fucked. You know, unless you really did it, unless you really fucked up. Because right. I fucked up. I mean, I'm not saying I right. would ever apologize. If I fucked up, I would. Say, Everyone, hey, you know, hey, yeah. yeah, I fucked up. But um, those people that are just like, oh, sorry, that was just <laughs> that. Was, I don't. I, you know, I was stuck in traffic, and then once you do that, it's just blood in the water. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just rip you apart. So you might as well go down swinging. I don't I mean, know how we got on this subject. No, I mean, it's a great. It's, I don't know how I ever get on any subjects. We just sort. We just. We just yammer. But I. But I do feel like there's a. I, I like to wield the human sword sometimes, where I just go, "Oh, hey, you know, um, yeah, that really hurt my feelings." Or like, I was just having a weird day. Or are you okay? Because that seems no, like if you an come aggressive. At that, that like really hurt my feelings. You can actually fuck people up by doing that. That you don't get mad. <laughs> no. Somebody was telling me they said that it was like, oh, so what exactly about the special didn't you like? Yeah, and then they're all like, "Oh shit!" Then you become like a person to them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is that you know we when you're on when you are presented in in largely two dimensional form to people, they th- that third dimension, the dimension that humanity exists in, is literally not there. So they do not see you as a person, and so they feel like. Oh, hey, you know, like I can rile this guy. I don't give a, a shit whether they see me as a person or not. I just don't like people taking free shots. Like I always feel like I got to get, you know, just get, <laughs> I'm supposed to just sit there and take that? No. My wife will be like, just ignore it. Just plow ahead. But who, who gives a shit? People I really like your wife, by the way. I've only met her for a few minutes the other night, but she was so cool. And oh, she yeah. just had this real warmth around her. Yeah, she does. She has, was so she has lovely. An amazing, amazing. My wife has an incredible vibe. Which is why our baby is so chill and everybody always goes like, and that's my most proudest thing other than when I say she's cute. They just say, oh, your baby is just so, she's so chill and so relaxed. And I'm thinking like, yeah, it takes after my wife. <laughs> so I'm trying to like, like, uh, you know, bring my shit down. You know what I mean? Like try to be like more relaxed and everything, which is easy because when she smiles, it just totally melts your heart. So it's, it's hard to be like, uh, you know, usually the wound up version of that I am. But when I am, I know what I need to do. Go work out. You know, go play drums or something like this, something to get it out of me so I can be like uh, get back into game show host mode is what I try to do. I mean, how much of the how much of the guy on stage is the guy at home? I mean, obviously, no. The guy, the guy on stage is is me at my worst. (laughs) (laughs) Like I am actually beyond that guy stuck in traffic. (laughs) I'm beyond that guy when uh, certain I feel someone's trying to take advantage of me. Bullying is something that really gets me going. Like, you know, I'm not like, you know, I had, you know, fights growing up who didn't, but like, I I am not like a fighter or anything like that. But there's something about bullying that like, I forget, you know, that I'm 48 and I haven't had a fight since fucking, you know, the 80s. (laughs) But isn't it odd that so many people don't realize because a bully is basically 
someone who takes out their aggression on other people because they believe they will get away with it and there won't be consequences. And how many people online, I think, don't realize that if you said, you know, you're being a bully, they'll go, I'm not being a bully. You're, you're, you, you're rich. Like, no, 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 no. It no, no, I, I wouldn't say you're being a bully. You got to come back. You have to insult the shit out of me. You really have to try. <laughs> you know, you got to try to really hurt them. You really have to try I, and hurt them. And they know that. That's why those guys, they don't have the pictures. But if you can really go at them, you know, go after weight. But you can't go hurt Go after them. their no. Yeah, no, you can't. Yes, don't can. go after that stuff. Yes, it just brings absolutely. you down to their level. No, it doesn't. It does. Yeah, well, good then. No. Good. Nah, you're bringing, you're bringing the knife to the gunfight. No. You're, you're doing that. Just be nice. <laughs> don't, blah, blah, blah. don't bring anyone no, into the fight. No, just don't I, go I, to the fight. I know, I know what you're doing. I know what you're I'm doing. Not, I just. No, because what, you, what you're doing doesn't work. Mm. That right there, I feel is the basis of all political correctness, where we're going to create all these fucking nice words, and no. then if everybody says the nice words, then the shit that's really in their soul it's isn't going to come out. picking your battles and using your energy wisely. That's all it is. And it's not... Right, fair enough. Fair it's, enough. Not, it's not wasting your energy on something that you know is just going to be a... I mean, how many... If you can really hurt them back, I, I advocate it. <laughs> I, no, I do. No, I do. I do. <laughs> I 100% advocate that. If you can say something meaner back to them that is not immature, that is victory. That I mean, is listen. joy. That is Christmas in but my it, heart. But if I love seeing but if that. if you're trying to be meaner, then it's automatically innately immature. Like, they're, 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 no, come on, man. Did you see, you see when that kid was, was just punching the fat kid in the face and the fat kid just picked him up and, and just dropped him oh on my his God. head? Oh, I think I went to a, the gym 10 days straight just out of the, the – the, determination um, i was just i screamed right i was like yeah i was so psyched for that kid don't think i haven't gone down the rabbit hole of bully beatdowns where you know it's like the this, you know the piece of shit goes up like hey, this little pussy and then this tiny little kid gets up and roundhouse kicks the guy oh, in the, the face so get- although the, the actual show bully beatdown was pathetic because it was like the nerd and it was like that movie, My Bodyguard. He yes. gets some bigger dude yes. to beat him up. And then the nerd's like talking shit. Like, yeah, now what are you going to say? And it's like, well, I'll, I'll say a lot of shit after the martial artist leaves. <laughs> I'm still going to – I know where yeah. you live. Is this guy 24 security? 24 <laughs> hours for, for the rest of your life? I mean, believe me, I just I, – I believe that there's – more strength in not giving in to every emotion that you have. And I have them. I, and I, I believe in that. I too. have them 100 percent. You know, like I believe in that, too, except 80 percent of time on, on uh, social media. Listen, dude, I'm not saying I respond to every single right, one of those. Right, right, right. But I got to tell you, though, if, if somebody comes at me and I look at their, their little fucking picture and I got something. Yeah, I'm both barrels. Yeah. Right the fuck back at him. Yeah, there was a there was a guy. I mean, every once in a while it gets under my skin to the point and I And I recognize it sort of like. I'm starting to think comments for me are like alcohol. It's like I don't know if I can handle them responsibly, so I should probably ignore – I should probably quit them the same because there was a guy you just that – develop a tougher skin. <laughs> I don't have a is. tough skin at all. You just develop it. I'm, I'm not – I don't All you have, have to it. do is just picture the person sending it. You just picture their room. You picture their life. Well, I didn't have to. There was a, a guy um, – a guy I – po- I posted a picture of a fucking Let's- T-shirt that I was wearing and this guy goes uh, – I want to punch you in your unlevel teeth. Unlevel teeth. Uh, he was like, you know, you're 45. Get over it. And I don't know if it was like give up Star Wars or whatever. And I looked at the guy's picture and it was an amalgam of literally every fucking like one continuous eyebrow all the way across shaved head. It just it activated every molecule of rage in my body. And I really I wanted to. Like, you didn't tell him that he looked like he was in the Star Wars bar. No. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like one of the bounty hunters. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just I responded with something light and You should have you should have included him and then tweeted George Lucas and be like, dude, I got a I got a new idea for a character. This fucking guy is great. And he's on the dark side to give somebody for Luke Skywalker to fight. You should have him in the final episode he's in. He brings the lightsaber down and actually cuts his eyebrow he's, in half. He's like one of those old magnet games him. where he looks like the same head upside down as right side Perfect. up. Perfect. Yeah, but I, but I just – I feel like giving into that is a victory for the other person because they were able to affect you. They were able to – you know, they're letting you – like what they are trying to do worked and then they win. Then they win. They win what? They they walk away with the confidence that they riled you, they and that is empowering away. to them. 
That's where the, where right. walk away to what? Do they do they even have another room? <laughs> walk away to what? The outside? <laughs> it just turn in circles. Yeah. <laughs> in a, 400 yeah, you're making it seem like they, they, they ended up getting to the podium. You know what I mean? Get- I mean, it's kind of funny this, you know, is that when people think like, oh, what, do you, what do you get bothered for? Things are going okay for you. It's like, I'm not a sociopath. Like, I'm still a person. Like, you can't not. I, but- I treat it as a sport, man. I If it's somebody and I can get them back, I do it and I have a great time. I read it back to my wife and she'll <laughs> laugh and she'll be like, why did you say that? And I'll just be like, can you fuck this guy? Does she, and then they all she, do all this. All these people are going to listen now and then have the fucking, you know, no picture thing and insult me or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's going to, it's like, that's old. It's, that's fucking, that's slipping on a banana peel. Like, every, this happens to me every time I talk about this on a podcast. You know what, though? I think you have to be careful, though, because when your daughter starts to get older, if people start attacking her to get to you, well, she's you will, not going to be on social media. Of course she'll be on social no, media. She won't. Every, well, not, not, as a, not as a child. Every kid will be on social media. Every kid will nah, have access I, I, to I hate that attitude. You don't think so? That whole fucking panic of everybody's going to do this and you can't stop it and you got to get your kid in a fucking $50,000 a year fucking uh, uh, whatever the hell it is, private. Uh, what's Little League for kids when they go to school? Uh, Kindergarten? I, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this whole thing, they, they, they got to. They gotta, <laughs> yeah. Like you got to do this and they, they got to be doing this if they're not doing this by then. All this panic, like. Fucking, I, 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 I kind of sense do it, this becoming a parent. Like, I avoid other parents. I like talking, like, you met my daughter the other night. You're like, oh, she's adorable. That was it. I yeah. didn't have to listen to you give me fucking 20 hours of advice because you had a three-year-old or some shit like that. Oh, is that, does that happen a lot? Uh, dude, they, it, like, parents are like, it's, it's, there's very few cool parents out there. <laughs> the very few like what you should do when someone else has a kid you just say oh he's a good looking kid oh get out blah 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 how old oh that's great hey just you're gonna watch the celtics wizards tonight have the decency to bring up some adult shit <laughs> rather than just sitting there oh now he's scooting across the floor i mean just give the person a break from that <laughs> as much as they love the kid but the last thing you want to do is that everybody sits there and they act like they're wearing a fucking lab coat you know, and they're a pediatrician. They sure. start telling, giving you all of this fuck. And I just sit there looking like, what is this based on? You have a two-year-old. <laughs> like, pre-med is like four years. Yeah. Even if you were in that shit, you'd only be halfway you, through. You don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You might be flunking. Yeah. And you might be flunking out. Yes. And you're not in any of this. So I just, I, I, I fucking, I tune all of it out. And then they get quiet. And then they get weirded out. And then they'll say to me, like, yes, yeah, so how are you enjoying being a father? I'll just be like, it's good. <laughs> then they probably walk away like he's not engaged. I don't he's not. Yeah, we we can't hang out with him anymore. And then that's perfect. I almost said the dumbest thing to your parents when when you when you introduced me to them. You didn't immediately say they were your parents, and I almost go, "Oh, these are your parents." Because <laughs> uh, your wife is black. Yeah, no, those are my wife. Your parents, parents are yeah. the whitest people in the world, yeah, and no, you are they, the whitest uh, guy in the world. And it wasn't. I was. I, it wasn't. Well, she I wasn't, could have had a different strokes upbringing. You have no idea. <laughs> they, those true. could have been the Drummonds. That's very true. But it wasn't. I. It wasn't something I was trying to say to be funny or anything. Like it was just a very sincere. Like, oh, are these your parents? And then I caught myself before I said it, and I went back to the table to lid, and I go, I almost said the fucking dumbest thing. And embarrass myself. But I, I could have had. What if? What would that? If I had like the oldest manager team in L.A. You know, this is still a couple of them left. Out I there. guess there is still a couple. Yeah, there yeah. is still a couple left. But it was really nice. Do, they, do your parents enjoy being grandparents? Yeah, yeah, no. We, I come from a big family and everything, so they're. Uh, I mean, I think that that's what it was all of these years. Despite what you're achieving at your job, if someone doesn't do your job, it's like they can only give a shit about it so much. Right. So. This thing, having a kid now, now I can understand them on a whole other level. Now, and they, and of course, they instantly know that I can understand them more um, the way they understood their parents more. Once you have a kid, then it becomes like this ah, this kind of like, oh, this is what life is for you, and now it's this for me. I'm not saying that that's what life is and you have to have a kid. God knows there's too many fucking people out there. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. That now becomes this shared experience in reality that we now have something more that we we can uh, just relate to on different subjects. Whereas before, you know, I was like their 
47-year-old teenager who was going, oh, I got a new drum kit. Oh, let me show you my new drums. I learned how to play this this week, you know? And they're just sitting there looking at And in the back of your head, like, going, like, they had, like, a fucking 20-year-old by the time they were my age. Oh, like that it. game sucks. I hate that game when I think yeah. about it. How old was my mom? Oh, yeah, she was, you know, I was 20 when my mom was my age. That hurts. Yeah, but this is the piece I made. It, if you were just sitting here working at fucking Dairy Queen or he had some fucking just jerk off job that you that you would you know the same job you had when you were in college or high school and you didn't do anything with your life and you didn't have a kid or anything like that then i could see it bugging you but if you're actually it's not like you just sat on your ass and didn't do anything i mean i guess i i, I did for most of my 20s but i just kind of yeah I, but i i I, I'm also very comforted by the fact that... Well, I'll go out on a limb and say you caught up with the rest of us. I mean, things are okay. <laughs> went right by us. Things are okay. Things are okay. But I'm very comforted by the fact that you're 48 and you just had a baby and my wife wants to have two kids and she wants to start like next year. And of course, that terrifies me. I'm like, wow. Well, I mean, I don't think I could have had a kid when I was younger. There was no way I, I, I was yep. responsible. You, you could have done it. I could have done it. We wouldn't have been good dads. No, 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 that's, no, no. That's how I look at it. So it's... Uh, you know, it is. It is what it is. I lived my youth into my golden years, and now I'm living. I'm, I'm doing like a Tarantino movie, yeah. where you switch it around a little bit. So then, uh, now I'll I'll live the second act in the third act of my life. I'm just I gonna guess. I'm gonna have to be comfortable with the fact that some places I go, people are gonna go. Oh, is that? Uh, are you with your grandpa? Right? No, they're no. not gonna think that. No, because you stayed in shape. I did stay in shape. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. When people say you're, to me like you're an old dad. It's like, dude, I can do more pull ups than most fucking 28 year old dads. <laughs> Okay, and I'm not talking about L.A. dads or New York dads. I'm talking about on-the-road dads, yep. those people you meet after the show, and you're like, oh, I got this guy by like five years, and you find out they're 12 years younger than you, and it's like, right. what the fuck happened to you? And it's just like uh, – and, th- and the thing is, too, is is once you uh, – it's hard to get it back, man. Like if I can tell anything to anybody, it's just keep – do something every day active, even if you just stretch, because just the level of misery that your fucking life is going to be. Well, I mean, it's <clears throat> you know when you see when you see people who are elderly and they're they can't really move and everything's sort of frozen. It's you know, yeah, that's what I was. I was always and afraid. all they can do is waddle over to their keyboard and write something mean to you and me, <laughs> just because we still have movement. <laughs> I, I see, did you see the Did you see the Logan movie? Did you see the last Logan movie? I don't know what that is. Okay, no, it was the, it was the Wolverine movie. His name's Logan. Logan, yeah, his real name's Logan. Logan, what? Uh, it's a good name. Lo- Logan is—I ju- don't know—that's the char- that Logan is the character Hugh Jackman played. It's—it's uh, it's not his real name. His real name is, is James Howlett. But anyway, it- is James Howlett his uh, alter ego? James Howlett was his birth name, and then he became Logan. Bit uh, by a Wolverine. He rabbit, was not bitten by a Wolverine. A radioactive uh, no. pheasant. <clears throat> no, no, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> you're thinking of pheasant man, but I think uh, it. That movie is interesting because it's kind of at the end of his life. And he's kind of lost his. He's lost the majority of his of his regener, regeneration powers, and that's what it starts to feel like as you get into your thirties. And when you're young, you just you bounce back, yeah. And then you take it for granted, and then you get in your thirties, and you're like, ah, you know. And then you you just get a little less in shape each year, and then after five, seven, ten years, it incrementally is just like, what the fuck yeah, happened? No, you, but you can't you can't give in to buying the bigger clothes. You have to walk around in the shame of tight clothes, <laughs> and you just be so uncomfortable in your pants that eventually something's got to give, okay? And they're not going to let you walk around with your button and zipper undone like you're in some <laughs> fucking rock band in the 80s. That's not going to work at, at the office. You just have to fucking – like uh, I put on – like I went up to like a buck 90, and uh, you know, and then all of a sudden I had an event, and I took out one of my suits, and I, I was like, oh, my God, I'm that guy who can't get a button because my fighting weight's about 172, so I was, I was 20 pounds over. And uh, I was so mad at myself, but like I – and my wife was going like, well, just bring it down to the dry cleaner. I'm like, I'm not being the guy <laughs> who lets out his suit. I'm not fucking doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to be that fucking guy because once you do that, dude, the suit – that's why uh, I, I feel bad for women and understand the way Hillary dresses. The suit is just like – it's the shit. Like if you're putting on weight, you got like – you got an undershirt, you got a fucking button-up shirt, and then you got the jacket and the tie. Like the amount of pounds you can hide underneath Sometimes that a vest. Thing. And a vest. <clears throat> yeah. A vest kind of gives it away though. I think if you got the vest, what it is is the tie, you don't see the, the ruffle of, of the shirt. You know, that right. kind of hangs down straight no matter what. Right. And it kind of gives you the, the illusion, especially like a white shirt. gives you the illusion 
that that's a straight drop off right. from your Adam's apple when it isn't. It's just it's just going out to sea. Yeah. And uh, I remember when I used to work in a warehouse every year they had the company picnic. And I remember when the suits would show up in their t shirts, you know, and you know, shorts or whatever. I was like, oh my god, where the fuck is that guy hiding all of that? You know, <laughs> big giant, you know. Love handles and stuff. So that's why I understood Hillary. Like, just walk. She got to the point. It's like, fuck this. I'm not wearing long hair, you know? Well, I'm going to be wash and go, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to f- dress like a real estate agent. How, how often? What's, what's, your, what's your exercise regime? Oh, dude, I've been bad. Well, right now, I just, uh, I kind of been trying to do the elliptical in the <laughs> As morning. a new dad. Yeah. But I, it's more, it's way more obvious. I hate to say what you eat. Because it's literally like you can do an hour on the elliptical and then go inside and eat three cookies and you just at the very least like like even that out. Right. It's like you never just did that. Right. And, and right. it took you an hour to do what you can – you can probably shove all three, three in your minutes. mouth at the same time. Yeah. You're, you're an animal. And then wash it down with milk. Then you're fucked. So when I'm being good is uh, you know I stop eating at five and I just really try to do the salad with the protein thing and then try to force myself – to uh, just drink waters for the rest of the night. But, uh, you know, I am a big sports fan, you know, and I do like to drink, like, alcohol. Just, I mean, it's just complete empty calories. Oh, and, there's uh, no – yeah, there are no – there's no health. Like, whenever they do the, the Michelob Ultra card yeah. brick, it doesn't matter. Nah. There's sh- it's the sugar. Yeah, it's like a diet candy bar. It's, like it's, it's, it's Your it's body's doing not going to metabolize all that sugar at once. Yeah. It's just going to go, I'm going to put this over here in your gut for a while. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm still out of shape right now. I know I am. I just feel like this. You know, whenever I can just grab a nice handful, like, get over here, you. <laughs> That's when I'm like, all right, I, I need to do something. So I keep – Meaning to do something, I am doing something, but then I negate it. Like my parents coming in, I'm sure. obviously I'm going to take them to the great spots, right? And I lie to myself that I'm going to get a salad. You know, I hung in there for a couple of meals, and I was just like, "All right, fuck it, it starts again on Monday." <laughs> um, and then tonight's game seven, and it's just like this is a tough time of year. Um, but like I, you know, I got my fight and weight. My birthday's coming up, so I'm, I'm going to try to try to get down to where I need to be. What's it, game 7 is a, it's basketball, right? Yeah, basketball is uh it's the Celtics versus the Wizards. Which okay. would would be it's not really Batman versus Superman. It's more like <laughs> Thank you. If like, I don't know, if Wolverine's too popular now. And he had a couple of hit albums. Like a couple of X-Men that nobody gives a fuck about. <laughs> well, they're like right their- right below, right below the main X-Men. Like if they had a fight, because LeBron in Golden State, that's like those are the big superheroes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Like Colossus, he Colossus appeared a little bit in the X Men movies, but not much. Right, and considering I have no idea who that is, then and yes. what's so funny is it's how stereotypical. Is Halle Berry still in those movies? No. What's so funny is how stereotypical this is because you're like, wait, what's a Logan? And I'm like, who are the Wizards? Like it's yeah. just like the idea, but it literally they used to be the Bullets, and it meant meant like speaking of superheroes, I, I think it was like faster than it's. Uh, Right. Speeding train, stronger than a silent E. What the hell the fuck did it go? Stronger than a silent E was you're, you're talking about Letterman. Bolt, Letterman. From... Speeding, speeding bolt. Because they ripped that off, so I always right. fuck it up. Superman. Able to leap capital T in a single bound. <laughs> it's Letterman. Letterman. It's a word. Letterman. It's a plan. It's Letterman. Letterman. I love that you remember Letterman. I love that. Yeah. That Turning the company. something back into a something. Like when somebody there would be a word and they take a letter away. Yep. You yep. know? Turn into yep. something. I can't think of an example. Into something. And then he, he comes in and he would put the, he would take the letter off his shirt. It was actually it kind in. of brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah. He was a nerdy athlete. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to be watching a lot of that stuff in the coming years again. So you can dust it off. Because- oh, yeah. Absolutely. But I, I mean, to a certain point. But I also, my mother was like, uh, she took us to two kid movies and was just like, I'm not doing this. These movies, these movies are, <laughs> she's like, these movies are stupid. It's stupid. She took us to For Love of Benji, which is a movie about a dog. And then she took us to uh, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, which was about a, a love bug, mm-hmm. you know, the Disney uh, franchise. Yep. yep. And it was somehow beating Formula One cars. And, <laughs> well, because uh, he had a lot of heart. He had a lot of heart. He was, That's a, right. he was a sentient vehicle That's right. that could open his hood and communicate with his wipers right. and his lights. And, and they Benji- had two drivers, which is more weight, which everybody knows in racing, you want to take out all the extra <laughs> weight. And for some reason, they had two drivers. Everybody else had fucking one. So after that, she was just like, the hell with it. Then we just went to like, uh, we went to some vampire movie like during the disco era and they tried to combine like disco and the vampire thing. And I remember in the end, he 
he finally bites the woman. She agrees to become a vampire, and she flies away as a bat. Yep. And he's like, I appreciate you doing this. And she's like, ah, you know, I could never get my shit together before. That was, uh, that was George Hamilton and Susan St. James. In? Uh, that movie was Love at First Bite. Yes! Mm-hmm. Richard Benjamin. Wow, I could never too. remember that. Dude, good. Richard Benjamin was in that, too. And then I remember the, the, they took us to see all the war movies, and then we saw, we saw like Taps and all these great movies. And then uh, me and my older brother convinced my mother to take us to, uh, to Scarface when it came out. <laughs> and I was about 14 or 15, and my youngest brother was like nine. Right, well, at least, okay. He yeah, was, my youngest brother was like nine. And I remember after the chainsaw scene, which was right up front, if my mother said we're getting out of here, I would have been fine because I had never seen anything like that. And you I stuck was, it out? Y- yeah, we did. And I, I remember I talked to my mother about it years later. She goes, yeah, I was definitely thinking this might be a little too adult <laughs> for your younger brother. But, you know, at the end, I mean, I thought it was a good movie. It was, a good <laughs> it was well acted. Yeah, my mother it turned it. out fine. Do you know where that Scarface house is? Uh, no. It's in Santa Barbara. Really? I, I didn't realize that. And it, uh, it recently uh, went up for sale. And I always look up stuff on Scarface. So that came into my little big brother thing on the side and I clicked on it. Yeah, it went for like crazy money. But I always thought that that was somewhere in like Miami. What or- do you think the cultural fascination is with Scarface? What is, what is, what is the cultural? Because it, it, I feel like every college kid you know, has like a – maybe not so much now, but at least when I, when I went to college, which is still very long after Scarface – you know, like so many people had a Scarface poster, and right. there was the Tony Montana, and you know, like what 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 is the culture? I of remember that? Patrice O'Neill, rest his soul. He did a uh, he did this hilarious thing one time on Opie and Anthony, talking about how like Fight Club was like white guys like Scarface or something. Like I feel like Scarface, like the little amount of rap that I listen to, like that is like that's their Star Wars. It right. seems like they. <laughs> Relate to, and I think it's just because it's a guy who had nothing. He did what he had to do. Survive. Yeah. He didn't take any shit. Right. And then he had like you know, and then allegedly, I remember him. One of those guys saying how like you know, there's the blueprint on how to get out of there and all that. So, I mean, I, I mean, I'm just a white kid from the cul-de-sac areas of uh, suburbs, so I don't know. I liked it because it was a violent ass movie. It's a great. It really is. That's a great what movie. I liked, and I liked I liked the cars, and. Uh, you know, I like when he was getting the Porsche and he was saying, this bulletproof, that bulletproof, all that. I like the first car he had that, uh, what's her face, Michelle Pfeiffer made fun of that had the leopard uh, upholstery on it. He had yeah. a Cadillac. I, I mean, I like old cars and shit. So. Did you ever hear Mulaney's bit about that movie? Uh-uh. <laughs> goes, Dude, that guy's a fucking genius, man. He is a mad genius. Ne- if you listen to Him and Nick Kroll, I, I didn't get to see that, uh, oh, hello. I wanted to see that so bad. Mulaney does not waste any words. If you listen to his stand-up, it's the, he says things in the most economical way possible. There are never pauses. There are never, like, uh. You know, like he and I still don't think that he's, I still don't think that guy's getting the credit he deserves. I think, well, I, I think he. I'm not talking about success where right. I'm just saying credit. And then the fact that he's behind the scene on SNL and he wrote all those amazing characters. He just has such a great – he said – he goes uh, – he's kind of shitting on Scarface and he goes, Scarface's house looks like if the Golden Girls won the lottery. <laughs> 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 he just has such a great way of turning because most times you know like you watch Stan and you go okay I see how they got from A to B you can see the math formula but with Mulaney you're like wow where did that come from how did he get to there no, from here he's someone I always if I get a chance I don't get to work with him as much as I'd like to but I always watch him and uh, I actually worked with him I always tell this story when his name comes up I worked with him in uh, Zanies in Chicago when he was you know he hadn't even moved to New York yet I still think he was a Chicago guy and he, like I was barely listening to him. He like had gone up, and within three jokes, I just got, you know, pulled to listen. And I, I, I never saw like a guy <clears throat> just so right out of the gate, already ready to be on TV. Yeah. Like his writing, his performance, his poise, the whole thing. It was just like, oh, this guy's gonna host a talk show. This guy's gonna like, this is it. This guy is like so beyond ready. Um, like the worst manager in the world could have looked at him and be like, I don't know, I think this kid has something. <laughs> it was it was a complete, um, complete no brainer. I was like, this guy, there's no fucking way this guy isn't going to get something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even it's just, <clears throat> I even just look at his posture. He's just got perfect posture, and his his just the way he holds the mic. He's so <laughs> he's so seamlessly confident on stage, and he's so 
and the way that he talks is so it's eloquent. He's eloquent, and it's and, and it's, while he's ripping the shit out of stuff, but it's slow. It like he takes his tight breathes in a way that you just you get so drawn in. Yep, you know, and that's that's real confidence. I feel like sometimes when I'm a, when I, you know, I'm like, oh, I gotta, I can't give him a moment. I just gotta go, 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 go. And and you realize like, yeah, that's one way to do it, but. I feel like you know nah, nah, better, you, more confident comedians. Once are, people know who you are, you can definitely take a moment. But then you got to be careful you don't abuse that. But like it's it's real confidence to be able to take a moment when they don't even know who the fuck you are yet, right? Because you're still you're just in that like me, like me, like me, yes. still like me. Um, so yeah. do you ever do you ever go perform in rooms? Do you ever just drop into rooms where people may not know you and just try stuff? Um, I drop into comedy clubs all the time. So like if if. I always look at it like if if my name wasn't on the thing that night, then you know it's a pretty good chance that most people there don't know who I am. Um, but recently, I popped in and uh, actually, Earthquake was headlining, and it was fun because nobody knew who I was, and I ha- and it had been a while since I had uh, a feeling because you know because most times now you know with my daughter it's just like I'm going out to do my shows on the road so people yeah. are coming out to see me and that so that was a lot of fun and it was probably the most fun set I had this year going up there and having to get them and then kind of losing them and getting them back it was like the old days like I always felt like I was a better comic you know before I started putting stuff on television or whatever you know because when people didn't know you, you had to go up and get them I remember that they, and there was never like okay I got them now I know how to get them you know, it wasn't. It was just like, now I'm going to do my other spot. And the whole fucking anxiety started over again. Like, going, okay, how am I going to get these? I never forget that. Like, all those times in New York being, going up um, and just one impossible situation after another, super late at night, and just watching people failing or succeeding in front of me and trying to learn from as much as I could from all of it. To, to apply it to my mindset when I went up there just so I could get him to fucking give me a chance to get to that first laugh so maybe I could get on a run. And um, I hadn't felt that for a while until I, I went up on that. And, you know, I got some couple of jokes. I got this joke on white privilege, and it was fun to do it in front of that crowd to see, you know, if there were laughs to make sure I'm saying it right. And um, I don't know. that that was. I, I wish I could do that. I I said to myself I was going to do that more. I got to drop in on shows like that more often. I'm just kind of out of the loop as far as what they have. I remember they used to have Fat Tuesdays and they had Chocolate Sundays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo Better Mondays. Yeah. And uh, I used to go up on those all the time. And then just as I got busy with the F is a Family, which comes out May 30th. May 30th. F is Family. Second season. Second um, season on Netflix. Yeah, it became more of going out and just keeping my act like, you know, ready to go so it doesn't atrophy. You know what I mean? So then when I would go out, on the weekends when people paid to see me that I wouldn't be rusty because uh, I've seen people do that shit. Oh, you know, I work out shit when I'm on the road. I work it out when I'm on the road and I'm just kind of like, well, people paid to see you. They're not paying to watch you work shit right. out. Right. You know, so go to the gym during the week. Right. And then show off the guns on the weekend. That's how, that's how, <laughs> that's how I, I learned how to do it. That was a, a uh, coming up in the Boston scene. That was kind of ingrained. You try out your new shit during the week, but on the weekend you come in here and you do your, you do your good stuff, you know. You do your A level of material because, um, you know, there was too many funny guys up there. That if, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't, then you wouldn't get the you wouldn't get the gigs. Do you trust, like, you know, now when people come to see you on purpose and you're fill a big theater with thousands of people, do you do stuff and then you go, I don't know if this was that funny. I wonder if this crowd just, you know, because they're your crowd. You're performing no, for I, your I crowd. Feel a few times if, if I laugh and people are laughing at the sound of my laugh because they listen to the podcast, like I always say, okay, all right. Though they're just – they're laughing because they know me. I know, I know that that isn't. But I, I, I know when the thing is ready, when it's really like, um, you know, uh, what – it's a different sound laugh when they're laughing, laughing rather than being like, oh, this is the guy I saw in the thing and now I'm looking at him. And I'm excited. So a recognition laugh versus a, a gut bust. Yeah, laugh. like a serious like. There's a, there's like two or three bits I got going right now in my act that like uh, I did one in um, 
I, I made another comedian kind of double over when I did it. And I was like, all right, if I get a comedian doing that, then I, I'm obviously a, I'm either on a good road or I'm going to have to apologize <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you to somebody. You almost can't trust it when a comedian laughs too hard. You're like, did I just yeah. say something really offensive? Because I know because comic, we we all laugh. We laugh. I always feel like comedians laugh in between the laughs. Right, 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 um, right. That's the shit that they find funny where the other stuff is just too pedestrian. Like, yeah, yeah, right. set a punch. I get it. I get it. But they'll laugh at other stuff if there's something extra mean in it mm-hmm. or uh, there's an element of failure to the joke they'll laugh you know <laughs> it's, 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 it's that type of stuff yeah that's completely true or if it's or if it's something that is you know what the audience is completely <laughs> taken aback by the other comics will laugh oh that's my favorite that's one of my favorite things that I just love when a comic goes up and just has this belief, like, right? Am I right, people? And everybody's just like, no, not at all. You couldn't be more wrong. And just watching them feel that. Because I know what that is. That is like it's a concussive hit to your chest mm-hmm. um, when that starts happening. Like, I don't like watching people bombing out of control. Like, But watching a friend of mine going up and bomb. That's the, the one thing I, I, I do miss about, you know, back in the days where uh, – you know, when we were coming up, I mean, we used to, I mean, we were so like the group of guys I came up with, we were just so uh, just bad to each other. It was just bad. We, we were just detrimental. When I really look back, we <laughs> we were always going, oh, we're helping each other out because we're toughening each other up. And it was just, it wasn't like I, it was just, it was just sort of really mean. And it was the funniest guys I've ever met in this business. And we didn't write one fucking joke together, no sketch, no script. Nothing. We basically hung hardcore eight years and just sat and just trashed each other <laughs> nonstop, nonstop. Yeah, those jokes. Sometimes those jokes where, and the more you do it, I feel like the less it happens. But every once in a while, where you just take a swing so hard that the bat like wraps around and hits the other side of your face, and the, oh, yeah. the audience will collectively say, "Listen, this happened very fast, but we all got together and we are a hundred percent." Yeah, unanimously not on board with that. We are unanimously not on board with what. Yeah, but you can always just save it. Looking at you, save it. You just go (laughs) now. What are you guys all in the industry that I'm making fun of? You know, you can get out of it. I'm the only guy who dips my balls in a drawer full of steak. And like, yes, you're the only guy. Okay, well, I will celebrate my differences. I will celebrate my differences. Yes, I was raised to tolerate different people. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's uh, and the LA comedy scene is actually. You know, the, in the country, the L.A. comedy scene is not the best. But lately, it's gotten good. It's gotten real it good. Is, it, is, it has gotten ten times better since I moved out here. <laughs> that just sounded really arrogant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. When I, when I, when, yeah, yeah, no, hole. when I came out here, because I moved away from here in like uh, 99, and I went back to New York, and, I, and New York just felt like home. And then after, and then uh, I was there for about five, six years, and I just felt like it was time to move on. And I was coming out to L.A., and I was liking it, and I was fighting that feeling because I had such a bad experience the first time I came out here where I just, I just wanted to get on stage and grow as a comic. And, th- and this is not the fucking place to do that. Mm-mm. And um, I started coming out. You know, I had a few things on TV, and all of a sudden, like, a few doors started opening up. Like, hey, why don't you come down to the improv and do a set? And I'm like, I you know, I played it cool. Like, yeah, cool. And I was just like, well, you let me on that fucking stage. So when I moved out here again, I remember standing in the back of the comedy store in the late 2000s, mid to late 2000s, it was like 2007. And I remember watching some acts that were going up and like this fucking depression literally washed over me. And I was thinking like, oh my God, what did I do? I moved back out here to this. And it's not that the comics were less funny. It's just, it's the gym thing. They get less reps. So people were just tighter and more comedically fit in New York. Like the average guy that was okay was so much better than the L.A. guy. Because they're going up three, four times a night. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's very hard to do here. Yes. If you could do that in a week, you're like, dude, I'm fucking killing it. (laughs) So they were – comics in New York were running them out of the gym basically as they say. And uh, so – but it just took me a minute to kind of see – you know, through the forest and just kind of see like, oh, that guy's good. That guy's good. So then I knew when to pop in, when to listen and when not to listen, because there's always going to be the new guys um, that are figuring out how to do that. And I was a new guy, but I I, I feel like, um, you know, guys like, you know, Joe Rogan 
and uh, you know Gerard Carmichael coming along, you know when he when he came along, uh, Al Madrigal, and there was all these guys that were just like true Sebastian, and they were just really like guys that loved comedy, and um, I'm missing of course so many other people. Then I and then I'm like like a total geek fan of so many people, but they keep booking TV work. And I'm such a fan of their stand-up, like it fucking annoys me. Because <laughs> you just want to see him perform. Yeah, like stop being successful there. Is right. it, you do this and then you fucking – Get back in the club where I need you. Yeah, and I don't want to see you do stand-up. Like uh, Fortune Feimster is like – it's like just – every time I see – like she just has this stage present, how fucking funny she is. Yeah. The first time I saw her that like, you know, and then I would always see her. She was working on uh, – what was it? Chelsea Lately. Mm-hmm. And then she – I saw her on a pile of something. She keeps booking acting work. And I'm like, this is why I never see her down at the fucking club. <laughs> She's too goddamn talented. Don't let your success ruin your stand-up. I know. Get back there. No, but I'm always just like, look, what, look, if somebody's like a decent comic and then they get something on TV, I'm like, hey, good for them. Good for them. You know? Right. That's great. Continue on. But if somebody – I see somebody, I'm like, I'm like, this person could be great. This person's on their way to being like – like I want to see – watch this person do – Hours, but they hours do specials, get... and they keep booking shit. You're like, fuck. That's taking you away from. Yeah, the... this is just my own. I'm not telling her what to do with her career. This is just me as a nerd. But the comedy store is, uh, and the improv are both amazing right now. Chris D'Elia is another guy that came along. Just yeah. a legit, legit headliner. Like, just like a legit, like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta do a little math before I go on on after this guy because this guy is blowing the fucking roof off the place. Um, you know they have a lot of guys, and then oh, I'm I'm forgetting everybody. Mark Marin, watching him, you know, with you know, is what the fuck podcast? Yeah, and then he got the following, and then people got what he was trying to do. Although I do miss Mark going up as an unknown comic <laughs> and watching people dealing with him. <laughs> uh, he was like, there's so many guys that were like, that was another thing, you know, bringing up Patrice again. I remember I used to try towards. You know, the end hanging hanging out like when I was in New York before I moved out here, I really tried to uh, enjoy watching him interact with people that didn't know him. Like it wasn't even the show. It was afterwards when he was walking around New York. And I used to like – it was be, be so funny, but there would always be like this wave of like, ah, oh, fuck. I mean there's no way this guy's not going to be super famous and someday people are going to expect this and I'm never going to get to see somebody like – Meeting him for the first time, not knowing who he is, and just having their head spun around. It's one of my favorite things that I've gotten to see in uh, while doing stand up, but um, I don't know, kind of all over the place. But like, but since then, when I first came out, is like, you know, Rogan's down at the store all the time, and Marin's down there, all these guys are down there, and then all these new, you know, kid I call them kids, are coming up, and they're getting to watch all these guys that I like, and it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's like kind of like another. I mean, it's a fucking zoo down there now. It's like yeah. literally like a scene. It's hard not to get. I mean, like everyone, you know. Listen, you, maybe maybe this is a maybe this is kind of a goofy thing to say, but I swear every time I step on that main stage stage, it's hard not to feel the history of feet that have oh yeah paced around that stage and just sort of feel like oh this is where you know. This is where Pryor would get ready for specials, and this yep. is where Eddie, you know. So it's it's it is. I I I kind of every time I go in there, I, I almost kind of feel like I'm meeting a famous person. Like, oh my, yeah. Well, you oh, got to keep is... going down. You got to get past that because then that'll affect. It'll like affect your uh, your show. But when I first started going out there, it was the late '90s, and it was a bad period, where it was just like. Um, you know, just comedy. Comedy just. I, I've gone through. T- like I started on a dip. You know, I started in '92, so the '80s was oh, just yeah, the yeah. whole that was, that the was, whole boy, that really fall was the out dip. of that. Yeah, yep. and then it started to come back up again in the mid '90s, and then it dipped again in the late '90s, and then after 9/11, it's it it just has continued to ascend, and then with like social media and the music industry imploding, and movies and TVs imploding, and everything's fucking free. Somehow we sort of floated up, and um, but in the late '90s was sort of the era of. You know, the person with the TV show coming in and just burning the light for like an hour and a half and having not really anything to talk about. And it became like this. And then all these comics I felt were watching it going like, I can't wait till I get a TV show so then I can go up there and (laughs) And fucking burn the light. Yeah, and waste everybody's time. (laughs) 
And uh, I, I just, you know, there was like certain guys that just walked in and you just, you know, if you were going on like fucking three hours later, you're just like, all right, man, I'm going home. But do you think the, the idea, because people, audiences, consumers are so voracious for content now, the idea of like, you know, is a special still special? You know, because I, I used to no, watch. It isn't. I used to watch the same specials over and over again. But I feel like people just watch no, something once. Like, too, okay, what's next? What's too next? Many. There's too many. There's too many. And, and a special used to be someone who was selling out clubs, who was a seasoned headliner, showcasing why you were selling out clubs. And now feature acts want to get hour long specials so they can sell out clubs. So now it's it's really like, like. <laughs> Their special is basically what you would send to a club to try to get – like when we used to send out our VHS yeah. tab. I yeah. mean it's not quite that bad. I mean it's an amazing time where people are so prolific. But you know, I know a lot of guys saying like, oh, I watched so-and-so special or this person special and we have like overlap and stuff and all that. And it's like – it's like, yeah, because people are getting specials too quick. There's too many of them and you don't have time to find your voice. So even if you, you go on to somebody else's topic, you're going to be – taking it from a a, a skill set where there's going to be like overlap because even that happened to me early on in my uh i did another story i've told this a million times in my the first one i ever did i did a half hour for comedy central and i was green to get a half hour i mean i was like let's see i did that in like oh three so i was 11 years in and that was considered to get a half hour special 11 years in that didn't happen when i started right they used to have like the A list. The A list was a, a A list comedian doing half his act. I remember that. Yeah. So then by the time I came along, the bar was dropped down lower because Comedy Central was fucking giving them out like, you know, candied cigarettes, right? And these half hour specials. So I was one of the guys. They're like, all right, we're running out of guys. Let's give it to the fucking redhead weirdo. <laughs> so I did one. And I remember like a year earlier that, that, uh, that show MTV Cribs had come out. Mm hmm. So I had a bit about MTV Cribs and Greg Giraldo, rest his soul, he had a bit. And ours was so similar, it was fucking eerie. And like, I remember, I think I did it and Greg got off stage at the cell and Greg's like, dude, he goes, he goes, I'm not fucking with you. I swear to God, you know you can trust me, but I have the exact same bit. And I, la I go, yeah, Greg, obviously, I know, I, obviously, I, I know you're not, you know, I, I know who you are. I know you wouldn't do that or whatever. So, and we had both, I don't know, we both needed material at the time. So we made this sort of agreement that we would both just do the the bit on the road because it was a generic like, oh, yeah, I'm watching Britney Spears in a fucking helicopter as I'm sitting on a fucking air mat. I mean, it's the, mo the most obvious, you know, angle that you would take on that because right. we were young guys when we did it. So um, I go to do my special and I forget that conversation. Oh, no. <laughs> and I do the bit. Oh, no. And then... He ended up getting a special like a year later. He also forgot the conversation <laughs> and he did the bit. But the funny thing was, was he did it after me. So everyone, you know, I started getting emails back then when I was on AOL.com. This is how right. long ago. I was going, guys, so Greg, Greg, just to let you know, um, there's this guy, Greg Giraldo, stealing your shit. And then I called him up. I was like, dude, did you do the fucking Britney Spears bit? He goes, and he said, oh, fuck, yeah, why? I go, I already did it on my other one. <laughs> and and I think he was laughing because everyone was thinking that he was stealing from, from me. And it was just, it was one of those things. But now that is, back then, that was like, like, I'm not shitting on these young guys today, women that are getting these specials, because I was that guy. Except back then, it, like when I started, guys at that level got nothing. And then by the time I got to that level, it was, you got a half hour. And now you get an hour. Right. And then you combine the fact, well, back then, even then, when I got it, you had to wait for them to tap you on the head with their magic wand going, okay, little boy, you can go live your dream now for half an hour. Now, comics get to decide, oh, I'm ready. This is a special. This is worthy yeah. of being a special. So I'm a little concerned where, like, um, you know, as a fan of comedy, like, if, like, Chappelle or Chris Rock puts one out or Louie, like, I want a month to take that in. You know, see it, think about it, be affected by it. But now, like with that, there's a new one coming out every week. It's just like, it becomes like, like uh, that that thing with like Lost. Remember Lost? Yeah. Where it was just like everybody be like, you know, oh, you got to watch the show, you got to get caught up, or like, you know, you got to start watching The Wire. You got to watch this, and you'd be like sixty fucking episodes behind. And even though you knew it was going to be a great show, it was just so like, fuck, too much pressure. Yes, and I feel like. Um, I'm a, a little apprehensive 
I mean, maybe this. I'm just the old guy going, ah, when I was a kid. Yeah. You had to wait till HBO said you were ready. But, like, there, there is going to be an, an element of, of uh, you know, there, there are only so many hours that are ready to go. Right. You know what I mean? And, like. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, so I don't know where this, I don't know where it goes. I have no idea. But the only thing I just say to myself, though, that keeps me calm is because I literally start going like, Jesus Christ, am I like in hair metal right now? Is that what's going on? <laughs> With how accessible this has become? But then what I think is, is people always want to laugh. That's oh, the thing. So yeah. as long as you keep going to the clubs, you stay contemporary. The thing is, is if you, if you stop going to the clubs and you stop being around the young guys coming up, you know, because you don't even understand that your influence, like everything just influences it. And then you kind of change with the times. It's when you stay out of the clubs and you're just performing to your crowd and they're getting older and older and your show's getting earlier and earlier. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're doing the 3 p.m. show and then you walk into the comedy store being like, I sell out 3 p.m. shows around the country. You're going to go in there and you're going to get your fucking ass kicked. <laughs> and you're going to be literally, it's going to be like you're going up there playing disco when everybody's listening to these fucking DJs, I mean, I've, I do, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen that, and I walk out of the club when it happens because it, it's like a fucking bucket of water to the it comedians. Ter- that what and you just described this, terrifies me. Yeah, and then watching somebody have to try and make it again. That that trying to make it again is harder than making it. Yeah. Once you once you fucking lose them, and then you're coming back again, and you're this old fuck. And everybody who's your age, they're too fucking old to go out now. The kids are in college. They don't have money to go see you. And now you're going to come around like this old creep and start doing colleges again to try to get that going is – is uh, is uh, yeah. A few people can do it. Brian Regan can just tour for the rest oh, of the Oh, yeah. Life. You can count them on one hand. <laughs> but it is- I saw Lewis Black do it. Yeah. I saw I've, – I've seen – but you're talking like the best of the best. But like, uh, yeah, I, I would not want to face that challenge. Some of them just go to Vegas. It's like some of them just kind of go, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to go be in one place. Yeah. I'll just go to Vegas. You know, like that's the right crowd. Yeah. And then just do that. But that what you're saying. Then you have to invest that money wisely because there's this thing where like then you it's this weird thing where you be, then you're famous in Vegas and you're not you go. You're not famous anywhere else. So gamblers around the world, around <laughs> around the United States, know who you are. Yeah. But then, God forbid, you go to Portland or Seattle to do a gig, and you know those same twenty people that showed up to your Vegas show from Portland. Yep. Will show up to that show, and you're staring at an empty house. I so. saw you perform. We were eating shrimp cocktail. Yeah. Oh no. Here yeah, we go. Yep. Yep. So, but it is scary to. Uh, I do a run there, but I, I wouldn't. I would never do. Not a, like a res. Not like a two year long residency. No, I would go out of my fucking mind. Yeah, I don't think I could. I could. I could barely handle it for a week. I think I would go. No, I. I would, I, go I would go out of my fucking mind working any club for a year straight. Like I, I. What I like about this job is I have ADD massively. So like I lo- and I always hated when I had a day job and I got to the point where I'd been there for a year and I could be like, you know what? One year ago today I was standing right fucking here. And I just would always feel like a loser. So I liked, I love that every week, even though it's the same act and I'm working on it, though, I love that the background changes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a high end cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> also, it's- rather than the same background keep going by, that, that, that becomes to me, it becomes like mundane. There's nothing new to see. Then I'm not thinking new thoughts. And then my, my act literally just, I just, I go into a stall and it's, nosedive after that so are you continue did you take any are you taking any time off with the birth of the baby or are you yeah no i i did that but i also uh made sure i did enough i did enough and what i did was i came out of the gate doing clubs on like mondays and tuesdays or whatever Mm -hmm. and letting people know that you know all right i'm gonna have a fucking napkin with some subjects and what it is what always the new hour is it's just momentum and I get on stage and like, ah, and I'm able to go for 12 minutes. And then I hang on for dear life <laughs> until the hour's up. And then the next time, maybe it's 13. And then, you know, so lately I was stuck in the 20s. And it hasn't, in the next month, it went up to like the 40s or whatever. I mean, I was still fooling them or whatever. But like, I, now I got it down where I'm, I'm, I'm loving my act. And I'm loving like the direction that it's going in. And I don't have a bunch of baby material because it's just been awesome. And, you know... Uh, I'm excited that I am a dad, so I don't have like, a bunch of stuff going. You know, kids do the darndest things. Like, I don't. <laughs> They'll have poop any. on you. They don't yeah, care. They'll yeah, poop yeah. on your face. And They'll... then the phone rings, and I'm like, "Hey, 
Yeah, you um, get up a lot. Oh, boy, they sure don't care who they yeah, are. Yeah, what's on the phone? Oh, that's baby shit. Because <laughs> it was on my hand. <laughs> Come on, people. But you love them. But you love them, don't you? How long you guys? Hey, God bless them. God bless them. It's 36 years. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. I swear to God, I, I kind of want to see you do a set of the guy that you hate. I want to see you do a set of like the comic that you can't stand because I'll bet. Oh, that'd be a fun night. That'd be a fun I, night of comedy. I would bet you until actually, somebody does something that you actually do in your act, going, "Oh my god, I'm that guy." Fuck. But I, <laughs> but I actually do think you would, you know, because I think you sort of build up these ideas in your head of like, well, there are certain territories I'm just not going to go in because I know that's not who. It, but as an experiment, it might be kind of fun because maybe you'll discover that because of. You know, you- no, you know what it is? I respect the fact that I decided to be in this business. Yeah. I respect that I was dumb enough to do this. And I, I don't like – like to talk about Ephesus Family, which is what I'm supposed to be doing here, is you know, I made sure as much as this is based on my life, it's based on a bunch – like Mike Price's life and uh, Dave Richardson, all the people that we have in, in the writer's room – like everybody contributes. So then what it becomes is, is unless you were in my family, you'd actually be able to pick out, okay, that right there, that's based on truth. Oh, my dad used to say that, or my brother did that. But like, I, I wanted to do the show where my family or anybody, you know, that the stories might be about could sit down and watch them and not be like humiliated. Like, I, I don't right. want to like humiliate people. And I, I just have like, you know, this feeling of when my daughter goes through her teen years and she's just like, Dad, you're like so not funny, and blah, blah. That if I was on stage talking about her, um, I, I just wouldn't want to see what that would do to our relationship. I just wouldn't like – like sometimes I see comics when some of the shit they say about their kids. It's like, it's like you, you realize that this lasts forever on the internet. <laughs> They're going to see this. Their classmates are going to see this. Right. And you're exaggerating something that they did and then they're going to get a fucking nickname out of this. And being a kid is hard. Yes. You know? So I don't, I don't want to do that to them. So I – I'll, if if I'm ever, I always talk about her in a roundabout way, and um, and keep the jokes on me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I'm not going to be like you know, like ah, my kids are you know blah blah blah. I won't even say it. You know, just so somebody doesn't cut it up and it's very sweet to see you holding a baby. It's very sweet. You got? Oh, I love it. It's the greatest thing. I had the, like the greatest possible moment of my life just last night with her, where she was in a great mood. She had taken a nap. You know, and she was laying on her back. And she's at that age, you know, with like babies when they, they lift their legs up and they put their feet together. Mm-hmm. They're like all still flexible, you know what I mean? From yeah. being in the womb for so long. And she was just talking gibberish. And I was just putting my nose to her nose, imitating her. And she, th- and she loved it and was laughing and all that. And I did that for like 10 minutes. It was like the greatest thing ever. And, uh, and then my wife told me later, she goes, you know, that's actually really good for him. Like you're supposed to talk to them regularly and then also imitate the sounds they're making so they know to keep repeating the sounds or whatever. And I just thought I was having fun, but it was like um, like just when they look up at you, like how bad they want to like connect with you and interact with you. And when you're interacting with them, like to, I mean, they haven't seen Star Wars yet. Mm-mm. They haven't seen Scarface. So they're looking at you like this is <laughs> – But we're going to take them to see a double is, feature. This is the most amazing show I'm ever going to see. And just to, to have that uh, – that experience, like like my daughter made my, my wife cry yesterday just by walking in and there was like a sheet, like a like the uh, the comforter was up too high and she wanted to see her. So she's just starting to be able to push up. She pushed way up and had like the biggest smile ever. And my, it just it just melted. My wife all of a sudden it's like crying and stuff. It's on Mother's Day, man. It was it was awesome. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. It's awesome. So I don't see the comedy in any of that. Right. <laughs> like when I'm, I'm going to go on, like why would I ruin that? Being like, hey, now I got two broads in the house telling me where to fucking burn it. You know, like, is it worth it to do that? <laughs> that guy you're doing to get I that hate him stupid. So much. <laughs> oh, you, you know, you know, a comic I can't stand now. The latest one is uh, the cause comic, the comedy with the cause. Oh, right. Yeah, let's stop bullying or let's talk about this issue or that fucking issue. Because after what, and I don't mind if you do that, but you got to keep the jokes coming. Right. It, that, that you know what? Just, don't let don't sacrifice the jokes in service of a message. Don't just say something and then get a fucking applause break and then go. Like, I like did we're it. on Oprah, right? Then uh, that's when I just uh, then that's uh, like literally my, my teeth start grinding together. Do it with jokes. Just do it with jokes. I stand out in the parking lot when an act like that is on. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> someone who's gonna you know that and the uh, the white guy telling it like it is. That's the other one that I have to leave. 
Oh, you guys just can't handle you the can't truth. Can't handle huh? it, man. You know, you're too politically Didn't correct. Didn't realize yeah. it. Here comes a big bucket of reality. <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to douse those wings in truth sauce over yeah. here. So I'm gonna drop on those. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't realize it was the blank yeah. fan club. No, no, no. It's just fans I'm dangerous of comedy. It's just fans of comedy. Yeah, it's the person who is <clears throat> the person who has already assumed that they're just too much for the audience and not realizing it's like, no, you're just annoying. Yeah. There's it's no the jokes male and you're version just annoying. of like, you know, when you meet the psycho chick and she's just like, guys are intimidated by me. They can't handle me. It's like, yeah, you're a fucking psycho. You ever think of that? You're a fucking psycho. Like they should, they should date those those types of comics. They they probably do. Nah, but then they would fucking have a kid, and then what would that be? It could be the most well adjusted child from having two completely insane parents. That's possible. Two making a positive. It's pie. I mean, that mathematically doesn't hold up, but it but it could happen. It could happen. But I, I, I really uh, – I, it just makes me – talking to you just makes me feel like – you know, my schedule is so crazy. I don't get to spend as much time because, you know, I'm married. So when You're I'm fine. done with – You're fine. When It'll I'm adjust. done with work, I want to go Listen. see my wife. But, I, but every day I go, I'm fucking – I should be at the fucking club and I should be working on jokes. And I, and I just – I don't have the energy. Oh, yeah. You, you find it. <laughs> what you're doing, you do, you, you find it. You're, you're a fucking, you're, a, you're, you're your own enterprise. It doesn't it's matter. Perfect. I just, it doesn't matter. I like being on stage. I like fucking telling jokes. I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, there you go. Then you'll be fine. But you don't. But you know, I love what you're saying about your, your, your baby because so much comedy comes out of discomfort. And if there's nothing uncomfortable about something, then you, you know. No, and I want to keep that for me. I don't want to just be like strip mining every aspect of my life you know right. what i mean like i haven't said her name or whatever you know i just i just i don't want to i don't want to do like that but that that's like that's that's my life because you don't want to give a it, shout out to some of the people that are, all the talented people on the show at this point? let's do a shout out to f is for family f is for family uh that i is a show that i do with uh vince vaughn's company wild west and uh we put the show together with the great Mike Price, co-creator of the show, Simpsons legend, mm -hmm. and uh, Peter Billingsley, Mike Lagnese, and then all the great uh, voice actors. We got Laura Dern, who plays my wife, Justin Long, plays Kevin, Sam Rockwell, plays the next door neighbor, Vic, David Koechner, Mo Collins, Haley Reinhardt, Debbie Derryberry, Trevor Duvall, uh, Michael Kevin Richardson, and we act- Kevin Michael Richardson. Kevin Michael Richardson, sorry, dyslexia here. Michael K. Williams- uh, is from The Wire. Speaking of The Wire, plays what a, a character. What a fucking insane cast. Yes. What an incredible group of people. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what you do. You surround yourself. I saw Seinfeld say that one time about his, about his series. I, I just surrounded myself with the most talented people I could, you know, that, that I would want to hang out with. And um, that's what we've done. You know, I was in on pretty much all of the auditions that people had. Of course, you know, the bigger people didn't have to audition, but I was, you know, a huge fan of uh of all of them and uh just watching them being in the booth like and just watching like everybody's different processes they were trying to figure out the voice that they were going to do has just been the great like i still one of my most favorite things was watching uh dave keckner being bob pogo and i can't even remember the line he was doing but he was literally leaned back away from the mic it looks like he was doing the backstroke he was just swimming swinging both of his arms delivering this line as he was pretending like eat a pizza or something and um Justin Long, when he does Kevin, if I'm in the booth, I can't look at him if he's being mad because he, he gets like this, <laughs> this fucking look of determination, yet he's completely like, you know, there's that vacancy because Kevin's a little, you know, not the brightest bulb sometimes. Yet he is, and he is a sweet kid. But like Justin sort of captures all of that. And there's something, there's a face he makes when he's done talking, when he's mad at his dad, who I play, Frank, uh, that if I'm looking at him, I'm going to ruin the take. So, but yeah. And just I don't know. I've I've had such a great time with everybody on it. So it's the second season. It's ten episodes. Last year we only had six because um, I think it was weird. It's so it's how fast this move is, business moves. Like four years ago, for a comedian to be want to come in to Netflix and want to do a cartoon was weird. They were like, "What? Why, why would you, why would you want to do that? Like, you don't want to do because they I think that they wanted me to do more like what Louis was doing or right. what Marin was doing. And I'm looking at those shows, going, I can't do it better than those guys. Right? Like those guys are like, you know, like fucking Louis can can do everything. Well, it's always the wrong so, question though, where they go, "Hey, don't you want to do a show like that? No, I want to find the thing that I want to do the way that they found the thing that they want to do. I yeah. don't want to copy their thing. That's yeah. you're hey, just you know that thing that that guy Louis fucking absolutely <laughs> destroying." 
Do you want to do it like half as good or maybe like a third as good as him? Hey, you know, maybe you, you should want, do, you want a, to do that. Like, yeah, no, do no, a show I, about I a guy who wants to be a French rodeo clown like Zach yeah. Galifianakis. No, because Zach yeah. already did that. We'll, we'll put it in Fresno. Yeah. <laughs> and he wants to be a juggler. <laughs> totally it's different. To- totally different. It's not the same thing totally at all. Different. It's not totally the same different. thing at all. We'll get uh, Brad Garrett to play his mom. That's when you get the voicemail. Hey, Bill, it's uh, Zach. Uh, give me a call. <laughs> The fuck, bro? <laughs> um, no, so, and then, like, since this has been going on, like, as we were doing it, like, and then uh, I think what really helped our show was as we were doing it, uh, BoJack came out. Right. Which I think BoJack, I give them tremendous credit. I love that fucking show. I like, I, I, you know what it is? I love his house. BoJack's house is the shit. That fucking Hollywood Hills house with the pool. It's right on the edge. You never seen that? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I have, yeah. I, I don't know. There's something about... Every time I watch the beginning, like uh, when I watch the uh, the opening credits of that, it's not a comedy to me. Like I'm looking at it like, that's fucking, this guy's the shit. Look at that house. It's got that syndication money or whatever. But anyways, I feel like they kind of like kicked open the door for us and we were able to go in. And fortunately, it was uh, different. Uh, so I have two questions for you as we're wrapping this up. Number one, are you, were you ever concerned that being happy and comfortable would be do you ever have that weird sort of fear that yeah that was me in my my 20s and early I'm not 30s. gonna be a funny comic if I'm happy and comfortable if I go to therapy if I do this if I do that if I try to work out all of this shit um no um that's not what it worked out for me what it actually was was me becoming a happier per- person was great for the people in my life that I care about and I was really difficult I was very difficult to be around and uh, I'm not saying that I'm not still, but I'm a lot less difficult. So, I mean, you can't – the amount of therapy that you go to, the amount of shit that you talk about, no matter how many fucking rainbows you look at, you still have your pain right. to draw on. It's just you're now not taking it out on other people. Sure. And that's how I look at my, my 20s and my 30s was just me thinking that I was this great guy and I was going around and I was hurting a lot of people. And it was just like you know the day when I kind of looked back um, at it. And I was just like, I don't want to be this guy, uh, you know. And believe me, dude, I got a long way to go. And there's a whole line of people that would fucking tell you some stories that I do. But, you know, I am working towards But I don't buy into that. You know, I've had a few people going like, dude, used to be angry. I liked it when you, when you were angry. It's like, all right, well, go watch some old tapes and find a younger, <laughs> angrier comic. Because I'm not going through this. Like, I'm not going to be that fucking guy that just, you know, has a fucking aneurysm at 55 Right. stress and all that shit. Yeah, you don't want to have the aneurysm that people go, well, yeah, I mean, you know, he's no, what really you high he strung. So yeah, fucking, yeah, same guy, really same guy. Couldn't really deal with Anger rate him up. Anger rate him up. <laughs> there you go. I tried to tell him. After That's what I, happens. After I tried after to encourage him. After the fourth him. ulcer, I said, Bill, yeah. you need to take it down. He yeah. didn't listen. Yeah. He deserves to be dead. Yeah. He fucking deserves Well, he's the next angry guy, and I'll tell him <laughs> to keep being fucking angry. So no, no, it, it doesn't. And I... Uh, you know, I have a fucking amazing life and I'm enjoying the shit out of it. But I still also, you know, I fuck up a lot and I have a I still have the temper. What the what did I do? You know, do you, I, I since I don't know, in the last month, I, I broke the screen on my uh, laptop by mm. stabbing it with my phone. <laughs> so it's still there. <laughs> Just because my daughter smiles and makes my day now doesn't mean that like. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the saddest thing about my temper is it's at so many. It's just like if I could just handle if I could just handle those moments. Right. It's not like I'm running around yelling at people. I mean, I'll do it in the car. I have a little bit of road, road rage. Surprise, surprise. But like, um, it's just like yeah. So much of it is that shit. Like the way like I'm a big. I wish shit didn't change, guy. Like I I miss operators. Okay, I didn't mind when I had to stand in line and check in for my fucking flight. I didn't give a fuck because you know what? Back then, not as many people were flying. It, it all kind of balanced out, and I, uh, you know, all of this shit. Like the reason why I stabbed my phone into my laptop was because <laughs> I followed all of you know Steve Jobs' fucking you know agenda here, and I updated the new system, and then it couldn't talk to my fucking laptop, and then I lost all the passwords, and I couldn't get on it, and all this shit, and and it was me, and they would treat me like I was some asshole trying to, and I couldn't figure out how to get in, and I thought I'd finally got in, and like like three times during the day, I had the laptop in my hand, and I was ready to fucking break it over my knee, like that's even possible, 
Um, but I was ready to throw it and I kept setting it down and I wouldn't do it. And then finally, like at nine o'clock at night, and it was closed. This is how hard I, st- that's how hard I stabbed it. And I just took it and I just, I just fucking, sl- it felt so good. The amount of times I've had my iPhone in my hand and just begun to like put the tension to snap it. Right. And I've been, and I, and the anger, I get halfway down my forearms and I stop because I'm mature enough to know that right after I do it, the satisfaction is going to last for maybe 90 seconds. And then you're going to have to go get another phone. Yeah, and, and then have I have to go down, and then I got to go down, and I have to fucking go to the the Grove. It's a co- It's a cost. You know, everything has yep. a cost. Is it worth paying that cost? But I think losing all your passwords would make most people want to stab their laptop with their phone. No, I had my password, which I believe I was yelling at my computer. <laughs> <laughs> we've yeah, all. It's really. We've all done it. It's fine. I, that's not a bad, you know, it's, at least it's an inanimate object and uh, not a human being. I wish being. I could just take that sound bite and just play that to my wife. <laughs> hey, we've... <laughs> Chris said it. We've all done it. I mean, I, I don't know why you, you think what I'm doing is weird. These things definitely fucking listen to you, though, because I was pitching some uh, TV show the other day, and I was with somebody else, and I brought up, uh, it was that old guy moment, I brought up the banana splits oh, yeah, as of a course. reference, and yep. like and like... The guy, like, I'm so old now. The guy running the network had no fucking idea what it was. You know, with the animal costumes. Yeah, and goes, yeah, yeah. Is it Danger Woods. Island? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Jan Michael Vincent? Nobody? <laughs> and then, like, my buddy goes, this is how I, he sent me a text. He sent me a picture. When I turn this thing back on, I'll show it to you. Like, he got a, a, a fucking uh, little sales pitch thing on the side, whatever you fucking kids call it, to buy a banana split T-shirt. Like, how random is that? That is pretty random. That's bullshit. Yeah, it's like, fucking listen. Because like, ah. it's like he typed it in. I explained it. I think I said it's like Beetlejuice. Like I said, banana splits like three times. And they appear. And it lights up like, oh, yeah, this guy's really interested. Fuck. But for yeah. some reason, it didn't show up on my phone. I'm del- – I'm, I can't um, understand everyone's fascination with like Alexa or any of the home assistant devices. And like they're just listening to everything. So is your TV. You say. That's the first thing you do. If you get a TV with a camera, you got to put tape over that. Yeah. You I do that on my laptop. I, I do put, it on my I laptop, too. Yeah, the, I do all of that shit. Too. They're going to see you banging your wife. You're going to watch you jerk <laughs> off. They're just like, it's like even one of that, that Jim Carrey movie. The uh, good morning, good night, and good evening, whatever the fuck it was. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, the self-facing camera for masturbators is terrible because it's just the, the absolute worst part is just whatever dumb faces you're making in the process. No, I, I I I can't imagine. I can't imagine like that's the thing in the future. Like I just can't imagine the absolute loss of all privacy, and then just the way people they their cavalier attitude towards it of like, well, hey man, if you're not doing anything wrong, <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. You want to watch me jerk up? You want to watch me bang my wife? I don't give a shit. Fuck do I care? Like those people, it's just like, and this is the thing about them is there's just a sea of that for every one person going like, hey, dude, it's probably not a good thing. <laughs> it's probably not a good thing to have that out there. <laughs> if you really thought this through with your relatives and all that. I love that, this guy. I, I, you, <laughs> please write that down. That's it. Do it. What do I like, you know? I love, I love that guy. I love that guy. You want to watch me bang yeah. with Jake or shit? I don't care. Yeah. I'm so oh, yeah. funny. I'm put my ass all right up to the screen. Hey, you know me. I don't give a fuck. That person who like actually is a dope but thinks they're smart, like right. that person is just uh, <laughs> just probably that's me. That's most but, you of know. the internet, by the way. That's most of the internet. There's scientific, uh, there's scientific studies to back yeah, up that all, concept. Yeah, the whole fifth. Yeah, so... That that's, that's that's the one thing, you know. Every so often, I almost text you and go, "Hey, well, now I know you have a baby, so you probably have no free time." But I always want to say, like, I have, I still have free. Hey, time. you know, I think we live relatively near each other. We should just have lunch. But I always feel like I'm bothering you. I don't want to bother you and have you go like, oh, I don't fucking want to hang out with this guy. No, dude, gets me out of the house. All right, it's fine. My wife would like that. All right, get him I, out of the house. I, I, w- I would love to. I would love to take it because when we did oddball a few years, it was really fun. I'll, I'll bring my parents. <laughs> bring your parents. <laughs> bring your parents. Are these your parents, Bill? Yeah, these yeah. are your parents. I'll bring two other old, really white-looking people. And you'd be like, these "Oh my god, parents. those are your parents." Yes. The other thing we got from this podcast is that I feel like the internet has to make the Star Wars Scarface ma- ma- face mashup. We got to do it because it's fit. They both, you know, like like they both came from very humble beginnings. 
I don't know if it's called Scar Wars or Starface, but someone has to make the Luke Skywalker Tony Montana mashup where he basically starts taking over. Then the- you could overlap it with Kiss, where where Ace Freely was Star Child. <laughs> so Starface. So it's Tony Montana in 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 uh, uh, Ace Freely makeup. Okay. All right, with a fucking lightsaber. I love it. There you go. It's done. That's it. That's a new. That's a new Netflix show. Motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, fine then, Katie, for showing me that that was not a creative idea because the. Oh, it's already, all been done. It's everything's been done. There's no more original. You know what the worst feeling I had with that? I used to watch all these drum videos, right? Instructional drum videos. You know, thinking yeah. that I, you know, I watched a zillion of them and I still suck. But there was just like there was just some really bad ones out there, and I was hanging out with DeRosa who also plays drums one time, and I was just going like, uh, "Dude, you know what I would love to do?" I go, "But it's so fucking inside." I would love to do a parody of a fucking drum instructor. Fred Armisen. Video. Yes. How did you know he did that, dude? That was the most inside thing. Somebody and he literally goes, "Oh man," he goes. Somebody's already doing that. I go, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Somebody's already doing that. Who the fuck is doing that? Like Fred Armisen. I go, he's already doing that. He goes, yeah, dude. It came out like six weeks ago or something. It was just like, I, at that point, I was just like, I, I quit. Yeah. I, I fucking, I give up. There was, I give no, up. There was probably dude, he had one. everything. He had the awful Paisley shirt <laughs> that they always had in those videos from the early 90s. And all these jazzer guys always had yep. that thing. Then he had the thing, too, where they would just play this completely fucked up odd time thing. And then when they were done, there'd be a pause when the song ended. And then they would all spontaneously start laughing. <laughs> and then you'd watch it at home and you'd try to laugh, too, like you understood what musically just happened. But not. Dude, he had everything. Yeah. He had yeah. everything. And it was, of course, you know, ridiculously difficult patterns that you would never, you know, you would never put in any sort of a song. Completely useless shit. And, uh, and he fucking killed it. Yeah, there are some things where you go, okay, I can see how that would have already been made. But there are other times where you go, it doesn't even enter your mind that someone else would have. And you go, how the fuck? How, that's not possible. Yeah, that someone was- else gives a shit to this level. And, that, and like, I mean, I don't know what he made. Of, I actually, somebody actually bought it for me. There was another – I worked with a comic on the road and he goes, yeah, dude. That's what it was because I was so – in the in, during that time, I was so fucking like – it wasn't even that he did it. It was just like – because all my other ideas, oh, oh, that's already in development. Oh, that's already been done. Fucking Eddie Murphy had something like that 30 years ago. It's just like everything I came – I couldn't come up with anything fucking original. And then I was just like I – so I was just digging deeper and deeper and I, I was like, now this – there's no fucking when I was just talking shit. I wasn't going to do it. And the fact that he actually did it, it was actually kind of depressing. I was just like, ah, oh, God, I'm well, that you know what, guy. Because that one's real personal. Because that's not just, oh, wouldn't it be crazy if we mashed up star, like two things that everyone knows? That's like right. a very personal, this is part of your life. You play drums. You see these instructional videos. Dude, like, if it's... you can find some of those old videos, then the guitar ones are great. They got, it was called Hot Licks. And this is back before Nirvana and all those guys came along and all of a sudden doing a guitar solo was like, you know, kissing your sister or something. All of a sudden you couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and, I mean, used to be so. Yeah, used to be totally normal. You know, rock stars <laughs> would marry their second cousins. Um, they, uh, they had all these guys that would just show you how to do all this shit with the whammy bar, making it squeal and all that. But like they, it got so bad. And like the, by the end of the 80s, it's like your guitar had to kind of match your outfit. Like yeah. uh, you'd have like these like – I'm not going to say the guitars, but there was a guy who had like this sort of greenish guitar and then like it, the pattern that he had on, on the body oh, no. of it matched his boots, <laughs> matched – he had the same thing on his boots. He had it on his belt. He tucked his jeans into his boots so you could see his boots matched his guitar, which matched his belt. It was like rock star Herb Tarlick. If, if, you, if you ever watched WKRP, it was uh, it was something. But Anything I, that makes you go, huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, it was just, yeah, you gotta do that. just too much thoughts. So. Well, everyone should watch Efforts for Family May 30th. Yes. And, ten, uh, ten episodes as opposed to six, which I was trying to talk about earlier. Was, I was trying to get to that. I was just saying, that's why we only did six the first time. Got it. Cause, and I don't even think they would have given me the show if Vince Vaughn didn't come along to the uh, – with the pitch meeting so thank you to him and thank you to all everybody that I mentioned and anybody that I might have forgot uh, and uh, really proud of this season May 30th 
uh, on Netflix. And if you haven't watched it yet, you'll have 16 to watch. And I hope you find it as funny as we do. And Bill also That's has it. a podcast. Yes, called the, uh, the Monday, Monday Morning Monday Podcast. Monday Morning Podcast. Monday Morning Podcast. And I also have the Thursday afternoon just before Friday uh-huh. Monday Morning Podcast where I just check in on you. That one's only a half hour long. <laughs> Um, and that's it. Other than that, I'm going to be up in Canada, uh, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, and Regina. Nice. Over the next – and I'm driving the whole fucking – and then once after Winnipeg, I drive the whole thing just because I like knowing it exists. It's a nice drive. I mean it's like that whole area is just – it's just – it's real nice. I don't know. People ever up there is like, dude, there's nothing but fucking farmhouses and blah, blah, blah. There'll be something. There'll be something. There'll be some weird – Place to get something to eat, some weird fucking tourist attraction. It's like when I drove across Nebraska. At one point, there's like this fucking footbridge that goes across. Is that the 80? It's the 80. I was just like, what the fuck is this thing? And it went to some sort of weird, you know, Wyatt Earp type of, you know, Native American sad Western fucking tourist attraction. And uh, I remember just seeing that and these fucking like flocks of geese flying in V's. You don't see like that. World War II bombers. Like there was so many of them. Yeah, but you know, when people, people don't realize when you're in Los Angeles and you just see shit, stuff all the time, everywhere, seeing quote unquote nothing is really calming. We're just like, yeah, there's just, yeah. just trees or it's like a, you know, the same. I feel or like nobody. It's like a, yeah, nobody. Or it's just like a, it's like a, like a recycled cartoon background. It's the same barn that's at the forty-five degree angle yeah. that they don't. They're like, well, there's no point in taking it down because what are we going to do with it? So just let it fall. Oh, that's my dream. And my wife would never live out there. I would love to fucking live out there. She has the whole house and then the detached barn that I turn into a drum room, cigar bar slash, slash sports bar. <laughs> I have my old truck and my whatever late model car in there, and then that's fucking it. I'm good. Just get a vacation home, huh? Just get a vacation home. Well, how much does that fucking cost? And I'm not there. It depends Gotta on... Got to loan it out to other people. Then they're banging and I'm watching no. them on their TV. <laughs> Dude, what do I care? I don't give a you fuck. You watch me bang my wife in your butt? I don't give yeah, a that's shit. that's on you, you yeah. fucking weirdo. <laughs> oh, you want to see my balls here? I'll just there hold them is. right up on the camera. I, the don't don't give side a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I think that's a perfect place Dude, to fuck end. fuck them. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Hey, you want to watch the show? Don't I? Don't care. I'll fuck. just make another one. I don't oh, give a okay. fuck. Okay, I'm the guy. So it's I me. So I'm the it. asshole now. Is that it? <laughs> I'm the asshole. It's all me. All right, thank you for having me on. Oh, you're so welcome. Now leaving Nerdist.com. Enjoy your burrito. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Somebody's already doing that. <laughs> Who the fuck is doing that? Like Fred Armisen. I, was, I go, he's already doing that. He goes, yeah, dude. It came out like six weeks ago or something. It was just like, I, at that point, I was just like, I, I quit. Yeah. I, I fucking, I give up. There was, I give no, up. There was probably dude, he had one. everything. He had the awful Paisley shirt <laughs> that they always had in those videos from the early 90s. And all these jazzer guys always had yep. that thing. And then he had the thing, too, where they would just play this completely fucked up, odd time thing. And then when they were done, there'd be a pause when the song ended. And then they would all spontaneously start laughing. <laughs> and then you'd watch it at home and you'd try to laugh, too, like you understood what musically just happened. But not. Dude, he had everything. Yeah. He had yeah. everything. And it was, of course, you know, ridiculously difficult patterns that you would never, you know, you would never put in any sort of a song. Completely useless shit. And, uh, and he fucking killed it. Yeah, there are some things where you go, okay, I can see how that would have already been made. But there are other times where you go, it doesn't even enter your mind that someone else would have. And you go, how the fuck? How, that's not possible. Yeah, that someone was- else gives a shit to this level. And, that, and like, I mean, I don't know what he made. Of, I actually, somebody actually bought it for me. There was another – I worked with a comic on the road and he goes, yeah, dude. That's what it was because I was so – in the in, during that time, I was so fucking like – it wasn't even that he did it. It was just like – because all my other ideas, oh, oh, that's already in development. Oh, that's already been done. Fucking Eddie Murphy had something like that 30 years ago. It's just like everything I came – I couldn't come up with anything fucking original. And then I was just like I – so I was just digging deeper and deeper and I, I was like, now this – there's no fucking way. I was just talking shit. I wasn't going to do it. And the fact that he actually did it, it was actually kind of depressing. I was just like, ah, oh, God, I'm well, that guy. You know what, though? Because that one's real personal. Because that's not just, oh, wouldn't it be crazy if we mashed up star- like two things that everyone knows? That's like right. a very personal, this is part of your life. You play drums. You see these instructional videos. Dude, like, if it's- you can find some of those old videos, then the guitar ones are great. They got, it was called Hot Licks. And this is back before Nirvana and all those guys came along and all of a sudden doing a guitar solo was like, you know, kissing your sister or something. All of a sudden you couldn't do that anymore. And, uh, and, I mean, used to be so. Yeah, it used to be totally normal. You know, rock stars <laughs> would marry their second cousins. Um, 
they uh, they had all these guys that would just show you how to do all this shit with the whammy bar, making it squeal and all that. But like they, it got so bad, and like the, by the end of the eighties, it's like your guitar had to kind of match your outfit. Like yeah. uh, you'd have like these like I'm not going to say the guitarist, but there was a guy who had like this sort of greenish guitar, and then like it. The pattern that he had on on the, the oh, body no. of it matched his boots. Matched, <laughs> he had the same thing on his boots. He had it on his belt. He tucked his jeans into his boots so you could see his boots matched his guitar, which matched his belt. It was like rock star Herb Tarlick. If, if you if you ever watched WKRP, it was uh, it was something. But Anything I, that makes you go, huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Like a couple X Men that nobody gives a fuck about. <laughs> well, they're like right right below right below the main X Men. Like if they had a fight, because LeBron in Golden State, that's like those are the big superheroes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Like Colossus, he Colossus appeared a little bit in the X Men movies, but not much. Right, and considering I have no idea who that is, then and yes. what's so funny is it's how stereotypical. Is Halle Berry still in those movies? No. What's so funny is how stereotypical this is because you're like, wait, what's a Logan? And I'm like, who are the Wizards? Like it's yeah. just like the idea, but it literally they used to be the Bullets, and it meant meant like speaking of superheroes, like, I think it was like faster than it's. Uh, Right. Speeding train, stronger than a silent E. What the hell the fuck did it go? Stronger than a silent speeding, E was you're, you're talking about speeding Letterman. Bolt, Letterman. From... Speeding Bolt. Speeding Bolt. Because they ripped that off, so I always right. fuck it up. Superman. Able to leap capital T in a single bound. <laughs> it's Letterman. Letterman. It's a word. Letterman. It's a plan. It's Letterman. Letterman. I love that you remember Letterman. I love that. Yeah. That Turning the company. something back into a something. But when somebody there would be a word and they take a letter away. Yep. You yep. know? Turn into yep. something. I can't think of an example. Into something, and then he, he comes in and he would put the, he would take the letter off his shirt. It was and actually it kind in. of brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah, he was a nerdy athlete. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to be watching a lot of that stuff in the coming years again, so you can dust it off. Because- oh yeah, absolutely. But I, I mean, to a certain point. But I also, my mother was like, uh, she took us to two kid movies, and was just like, I'm not doing this. These movies, these movies are. <laughs> she's like, these movies are stupid. It's stupid. She took us to For Love of Benji, which is a movie about a dog. And then she took us to uh, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, which was about a, a love bug, mm-hmm. you know, the Disney uh, franchise. Yep. yep. And it was somehow beating Formula One cars. And, <laughs> well, uh, because he had a lot of heart. He had a lot of heart. He was, That's a, right. he was a sentient vehicle That's right. that could open his hood and communicate with his wipers right. and his lights. And, and they Benji- had two drivers, which is more weight, which everybody knows in racing. You want to take out all the extra <laughs> weight. And for some reason, they had two drivers. Everybody else had fucking one. So after that, she was just like, to hell with it. Then we just went to like uh, – we went to some vampire movie like during the disco era, and they tried to combine like disco and the vampire thing. And I remember in the end, he – he finally bites the woman. She agrees to become a vampire, and she flies away as a bat. Yep. And he's like, "I appreciate you doing this." And she's like, "Ah, you know, I could never get my shit together before." N- that was noon uh, and- that was George Hamilton and Susan St. James in uh, that movie was Love at First Bite. Yes, mm-hmm. Richard Benjamin. Wow, was in I could that never too. remember that dude. Good Richard f- Benjamin was in that too. And then I remember that the they took us to see all the war movies, and then we saw we saw like Taps and all these great movies, and then. Uh, me and my older brother convinced my mother to take us to uh, to Scarface when it came out. <laughs> and uh, I was about 14 or 15, and my youngest brother was like nine. All right, well, at least, okay, trial, plus postage and a digital scale without long-term commitments. Go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in the promo code NERDIST. That's Stamps.com, enter the promo code NERDIST, Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Here's Nerdist Podcast number 874 with Bill Burr. Katie. Uh, please roll the thing. Now entering Nerdist.com. Welcome back to the podcast, Bill Burr. I can't believe I ran into you the other night. I've never run into you in Los Angeles before. I don't think it, ever, I, unless ever. Uh, outside of a comedy outside club. Outside of a comedy club. Yeah, just at a yeah, my yeah. My parents were in town and uh, visiting their their new uh, granddaughter. So we had a uh, we had an awesome time, and uh, you know there was 
I had this major anxiety of them coming out and everything because you'll always have that like, you know, oh, did I do a good job? Was I? Am I a success? <laughs> oh, the parents. <laughs> yes. Am I worthy of you guys <laughs> throwing your youth away? And uh, <laughs> then I just realized like they're not coming out to see. I mean, they want to see me, but they're coming out to see my daughter. So it's just like, oh, and I was joking on my podcast. It's like, oh, I'm just opening. I'm hosting. Yeah, you're hosting. Yeah, 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 my, yeah, my daughter's closing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a, everything. It's, it's oh. so funny though that you still feel that you still feel that it's like. How many nights in a row can you sell out a, the Wilbur Theater to feel like, hey, I think I, I think I'm onto something here. I feel like maybe I'm doing it. Yeah, you know, but because you don't, I don't know. I don't feel any different. That's basically it. You know, there's some people that, that are the exact opposite. First time they get a laugh, they're like, dude, I'm like semi-famous. I'm crushing it. I'll be on a bus. You know, there's that person who just and those people, you know, God help them when it when it goes bad because they they go just as far down the other way you right. know that 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 you know that up and down thing i don't do that i just kind of look at it like yeah you know, i fooled them again <laughs> you know there's always that thing as you're walking there you're peeking out of the curtain did anybody show up all right we're having a show let's let's do it so i guess it depends on why you do it like do you like doing stand-up or do you like being famous and maybe there's kind of a mixture of Right. There's a dash of something and a little bit of something else for. Well, I love doing stand up, and then the whole fame thing is uh, I'm at a cool level, you know. People don't bug me, but uh, I also think like to be honest, like what what fame was when I started in '92 and what it is now is completely different. Right back then, it was just like I mean I don't know I don't I don't know my I there wasn't all these cell phone cameras and blogs and social media and just every fucking thing you did. Like I saw this poor bastard. He, he loved it and was laughing and all that. And I did that for like 10 minutes. It was like the greatest thing ever. And uh, and then my wife told me later, she goes, you know, that's actually really good for him. Like you're supposed to talk to him regularly and then also imitate the sounds they're making so they know to keep repeating the sounds or whatever. And I just thought I was having fun, but it was like um, – like just when they look up at you, like how bad they want to like connect with you and interact with you. And when you're interacting with them, like, to, I mean, they haven't seen Star Wars yet. Mm -mm. They haven't seen Scarface. So they're looking at you like this. Is, <laughs> but we're going to take them to see a double is, feature. This is the most amazing show I'm ever going to see. And just to, to have that uh, that experience, like like my daughter made my, my wife cry yesterday just by walking in. And there was like a sheet, like a. Like the uh, the comforter was up too high, and she wanted to see her. So she's just starting to be able to push up. She pushed way up and had like the biggest smile ever. And my, it just it just melted. My wife all of a sudden it's like crying and stuff. It's on Mother's Day, man. It was it was awesome. Aww, that's yeah, sweet. It's awesome. So I don't see the comedy in any of that. Right. <laughs> like when I'm I'm gonna go on. Like why would I ruin that? Being like, hey, now I got two broads in the house telling me where to fucking bed it. You know. Like, is it worth it to do that? <laughs> that guy you're doing, to get I that hate him stupid. So much. <laughs> oh, you, you know, you know, a comic I can't stand now. The latest one is uh, the Cause comic, the comedy with the Cause. Oh, right. Yeah, let's stop bullying, or let's talk about this issue or that fucking issue. Because after what, and I don't mind if you do that, but you got to keep the jokes coming. Right. It, that, that you know what? Just, don't let don't sacrifice the jokes in service of a message. Don't just say something and then get a fucking applause break. And then go, like, I like did we're it. on Oprah, right? Then uh, that's when I just uh, then that's uh, like literally my, my teeth start grinding together. Do it with jokes. Just do it with jokes. I stand out in the parking lot when an act like that is on. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> someone who's gonna you know that and the uh, the white guy telling it like it is. That's the other one that I have to leave. Oh, you guys just can't handle the you can't truth, handle huh? it, man. You know, you're too politically didn't correct. Didn't realize yeah. it. Here comes a big bucket of reality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to douse those wings in truth sauce over yeah. here. Just want to drop on those. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't realize it was um, the blank yeah. fan club. No, no, no. It's just fans I'm dangerous. of comedy. It's just fans of comedy. Yeah, it's the person who is <clears throat> the person who has already assumed that they're just too much for the audience and not realizing it's like, no, you're just annoying. Yeah. There's it's no the jokes male and version you're just of like, you know, when you meet the psycho chick and she's just like, guys are intimidated by me. They can't handle me. It's like, yeah, you're a fucking psycho. You ever <laughs> think of that? You're a fucking psycho. Like they should they should date those those types of comics. They they probably do. Nah, but then they would fucking have a kid and then what would that be? It could be the most well-adjusted child from having two completely insane parents. That's possible. Is making a positive. It's pie. I mean, that mathematically doesn't hold up, but it but it could happen. It could happen. Much of it is that shit. Like the way, like I'm a big. I wish shit didn't change, guy. Like I, I miss operators. 
Okay. I didn't mind when I had to stand in line and check in for my fucking flight. I didn't give a fuck. Cause you know what? Back then, not as many people were flying. It, it all kind of balanced out. And I, uh, you know, all of this shit, like the reason why I stabbed my phone into my laptop was because I followed all of, you know, Steve Jobs' fucking, you know, agenda here. And I updated the new system and then it couldn't talk to my fucking laptop. And then I lost all the passwords and I couldn't get on it and all this shit. And, and it was me. And they were treating me like I was some asshole trying to, and I couldn't figure out how to get in. And I thought I'd finally got in. And like like three times during the day, I had the laptop in my hand and I was ready to fucking break it over my knee. Like that's even possible. Um, but I was ready to throw it and I kept setting it down and I wouldn't do it. And then finally, like at nine o'clock at night, and it was closed. This is how hard I, st- that's how hard I stabbed it. I just took it and I just, I just fucking, it felt so good. The amount of times I've had my iPhone in my hand and just begun to like, put the tension to snap it right and i've been and i and the anger i get halfway down my forearms and i stop because i'm mature enough to know that right after i do it the satisfaction is going to last for maybe 90 seconds and then you're going to have to go get another phone yeah and, and then i have to, have to go down, and then i got to go down and i have to fucking go to the, the grove it's a cost it's a cost you know everything has yep. a cost is it worth paying that cost but i think losing all your passwords would make most people want to stab their laptop with their phone no i had my password which i believe i was yelling at my computer <laughs> we've yeah, all it's really we've all done it it's fine I, that's not a bad you know it's at least it's an inanimate object uh, and not uh, a human I wish being I could just take that sound bite and just play that to my wife <laughs> hey we've <laughs> Chris said it. We've all done it. I mean, I, I don't know why you, you think what I'm doing is weird. These things definitely fucking listen to you, though, because I was pitching some uh, TV show the other day, and I was with somebody else, and I brought up uh, – it was that old guy moment. I brought up the banana splits oh, yeah, as of course. a reference. And, yep. like, and like the guy – like I'm so old now. The guy running the network had no fucking idea what it was. You know, the, the animal costumes. Yeah, and goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Danger splits. Island? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jan Michael Vincent? Nobody? <laughs> And then, like, my buddy goes, this is how I, he sent me a text. He sent me a picture. When I turn this thing back on, I'll show it to you. Like, he got a, a, a fucking uh, little sales pitch thing on the side, whatever the fucking kids call it, to buy a banana split T-shirt. Like, how random is that? That is pretty random. That's bullshit. Yeah, it's like, fucking listen. Because like, ah. it's not like he typed it in. I explained it. I think I said it's like Beetlejuice. Like I said, banana splits like three times. And they appear. And it lights up like, oh, yeah, this guy's really interested. Fuck. But for yeah. some reason, it didn't. Great Mike Price, co-creator of the show, Simpsons legend, mm-hmm. and uh, Peter Billingsley, Mike Lagnese, and then all the great uh, voice actors. We got Laura Dern, who plays my wife. Justin Long plays Kevin. Sam Rockwell plays the next door neighbor, Vic. David Koechner, Mo Collins, Haley Reinhardt, Debbie Derryberry, Trevor Duvall, uh, Michael Kevin Richardson, and we act. Kevin and- Michael Richardson. Kevin Michael Richardson. Sorry, dyslexia here. Michael K. Williams. Uh, is pl- from The Wire. Speaking of The Wire, plays what a, a character. What a fucking insane cast. Yes. What an incredible group of people. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what you do. You surround yourself. I saw Seinfeld say that one time about his, about his series. I, I just surrounded myself with the most talented people I could, you know, that, that I would want to hang out with. And um, that's what we've done. You know, I was in on pretty much all of the auditions that people had. Of course, you know, the bigger people didn't have to audition, but I was, you know, a huge fan of uh of all of them and uh just watching them being in the booth like and just watching like everybody's different processes they were trying to figure out the voice that they were going to do has just been the great like i'm still one of my most favorite things was watching uh dave keckner being bob pogo and i can't even remember the line he was doing but he was literally leaned back away from the mic it looks like he was doing the backstroke he was just swimming swinging both of his arms delivering this line as he was pretending like eat a pizza or something and um Justin Long, when he does Kevin, if I'm in the booth, I can't look at him if he's being mad because he, he gets like this, <laughs> this fucking look of determination, yet he's completely like, you know, there's that vacancy because Kevin's a little, you know, not the brightest bulb sometimes. Yet he is, and he is a sweet kid. But like Justin sort of captures all of that. And there's something, there's a face he makes when he's done talking, when he's mad at his dad, who I play, Frank, uh, that if I'm looking at him, I'm going to ruin the take. So, but yeah. <laughs> And just I don't know. I've, I've had such a great time with everybody on it. So it's the second season. It's ten episodes. Last year we only had six because um, I think it was weird. It's so it's how fast this movie's 
business moves like four years ago for a comedian to be want to come in to Netflix and want to do a cartoon was weird. They were like, what, why, why, would you, why would you want to do that? Like, you don't want to do – because I think that they wanted me to do more like what Louis was doing or what right. Marin was doing. And I'm looking at those shows going, I can't do it better than those guys. Right. Like those guys are like, you know, like fucking Louis can, can do everything. Well, it's always the wrong so, question though where they go, hey, don't you want to do a show like that? No, I want to find the thing that I want to do the way that they found the thing that they want to do. I yeah. don't want to copy their thing. That's, yeah. you're hey, just- you know that thing that that guy Louis fucking absolutely <laughs> destroying – do you want to do it like half as good or maybe like a third as good as him? Hey, you know, maybe you, you want, should you do, want a, to do that. It's like, yeah, no, no. Show I, about I a guy who wants to be a French rodeo clown like Zach yeah. Alvin. No, because Zach yeah. already did that. We'll, we'll put it in Fresno. Yeah. <laughs> and he wants to be a juggler. <laughs> totally it's different. To- totally different. It's not the same thing totally at all. Different. It's not totally the same different. thing at all. We'll get- <laughs> the first one I ever did, I did a half hour for Comedy Central and I was green to get a half hour. I mean, I was like. Let's see. I did that in like '03, so I was 11 years in, and that was considered to get a half hour special. 11 years in, that didn't happen when I started. Right. They used to have like the A list. The A list was a A list comedian doing half his act. I remember that. Yeah. So then, by the time I came along, the bar was dropped down lower because Comedy Central was fucking giving them out like you know, candied cigarettes, right? And these half hour specials. So I was one of the guys. They're like, all right, we're running out of guys. Let's give it to the fucking redhead weirdo. <laughs> So I did one, and I remember like a year earlier that that uh, that show MTV Cribs had come out. Mm-hmm. So I had a bit about MTV Cribs, and Greg Giraldo, rest his soul, he had a bit, and ours was so similar it was fucking eerie. And like I remember, I think I did it, and Greg got off stage and selling. Greg's like, dude, he goes, he goes, I'm not fucking with you. I swear to God. You know you can trust me, but I have the exact same bit, and I li- I go, yeah, Greg, obviously, I know, obviously, I know you're not. You know, I, I know who you are. I know you wouldn't do that or whatever. So, and we had both, I don't know, we both needed material at the time. So we made this sort of agreement that we would both just do the, the bit on the road because it was a generic like, oh, yeah, I'm watching Britney Spears in a fucking helicopter as I'm sitting on a fucking air mat. I mean, it's the, mo- the most obvious, you know, angle that you would take on that because right. we were young guys when we did it. So... um. I go to do my special and I forget that conversation. Oh, no. <laughs> and I do the bit. Oh, no. And then he ended up getting a special like a year later. He also forgot the conversation <laughs> and he did the bit. But the funny thing was, was he did it after me. So everyone, you know, I started getting emails back then when I was on AOL.com. This is how right. long ago. I was going, go, I saw Greg. Greg, just to let you know, um, there's this guy, Greg Giraldo, stealing your shit. And then I called him up. I was like, dude, did you do the fucking Britney Spears bit? He goes, and he said, oh, fuck, yeah, why? I go, I already did it on the other <laughs> one. And, and I think he was laughing because everyone was thinking that he was stealing from, from me. And it was just, it was one of those things. But now that is, back then, that was like, like, I'm not shitting on these young guys today, women that are getting these specials, because I was that guy. Except back then, it, like, when I started, guys at that level got nothing. And then by the time I got to that level, it was you got a half hour, and now you get an hour. Right. And then you combine the fact that back then, even then, when I got it, you had to wait for them to tap you on the head with their magic wand going, okay, little boy, you can go live your dream now for half an hour. Now, comics get to decide, oh, I'm ready. This is a special. This is worthy yeah. of being a special. So I'm a little concerned where, like, um, you know, as a fan of comedy, like, if like Chappelle or Chris Rock puts one out, special. This is worthy yeah. of being a special. So I'm a little concerned where like, um, you know, as a fan of comedy, like if like Chappelle or Chris Rock puts one out or Louie, like I want a month to take that in, you know, see it, think about it, be affected by it. But now like with that, there's a new one coming out every week. It's just like, it becomes like, like uh, that that thing with like Lost. Remember Lost? Yeah. Where it was just like everybody be like, you know, oh, you got to watch the show. You got to get caught up or like, you know, you got to start watching The Wire. You got to watch this and you'd be like 60 fucking episodes behind. And even though you knew it was going to be a great show, it was just so like, f- fuck. Too much pressure. Yes. And I feel like um, I'm a, a little apprehensive. I mean, maybe this I'm just the old guy going, ah, when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, the way till HBO said you were ready. But like. There, there is going to be an, an element of, of uh, you know, there, there are only so many hours that are ready to go. Right. 
You know what I mean? And like, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, so I don't know where this, I don't know where it goes. I have no idea. But the only thing I just say to myself, though, that keeps me calm is because I, I literally start going like, Jesus Christ, am I like in hair metal right now? Is that what's going on? <laughs> With how accessible this has become. But then what I think is, is people always want to laugh. That's oh, the thing. So yeah. as long as you keep going to the clubs, you stay contemporary. The thing is, is if you, if you stop going to the clubs and you stop being around the young guys coming up, you know, because you don't even understand that you're influenced, like everything just influences it. And then you kind of change with the times. It's when you stay out of the clubs and you're just performing to your crowd and they're getting older and older and your show's getting earlier and earlier. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're doing the 3 p.m. show and then you walk into the comedy store being like, I sell out 3 p.m. shows around the country. You're going to go in there and you're going to get your fucking ass kicked. <laughs> and you're going to be literally, it's going to be like you're going up there playing disco when everybody's listening to these fucking DJs. I mean, I've, I, dude, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen that. And I walk out of the club when it happens because it, it's like a fucking bucket of water to the it comedians. Terri- that, what and you then just watching, described just, terrifies me. Yeah, and then watching somebody have to try and make it again. That that trying to make it again is harder than making it. Yeah. Once you once you fucking lose them, and then you're coming back again, and you're this old fuck, and everybody who's your age, they're too fucking old to go out now. <laughs> the kids are in college; they don't have money to go see you, and now you're going to come around like this old creep and start doing colleges again to try to get that going. Is is uh, is uh, yeah? A few people can do it. Brian Regan can just tour for the rest. Oh of yeah, life. you can count them on one hand. <laughs> But it is. I saw Lewis Black do it. Yeah, I saw. I've, I've seen. And but you're talking like the best of the best. But like, uh, yeah, I, I would not want to face that challenge. Some of them just go to Vegas <laughs> for some reason. They had two drivers. Everybody else had fucking one. So after that, she was just like to hell with it. Then we just went to like uh, we went to some vampire movie like during the disco era, and they tried to combine like disco and the vampire thing. And I remember in the end, he. He finally bites the woman. She agrees to become a vampire, and she flies away as a bat. Yep. And he's like, I appreciate you doing this. And she's like, ah, you know, I could never get my shit together before. N- that, was, uh, that was George Hamilton and Susan St. James. In? Uh, that movie was Love at First Bite. Yes! Mm-hmm. Richard Benjamin. Wow, I could never too. remember that. Dude, good. Richard Benjamin was in that, too. And then I remember the, the, they took us to see all the war movies, and then we saw, we saw, like, Taps and all these great movies, and then... Uh, me and my older brother convinced my mother to take us to uh, to Scarface when it came out. <laughs> and I was about 14 or 15. And my youngest brother was like nine. Right, well, at least, okay. He yeah, was, my youngest brother was like nine. And I remember after the chainsaw scene, which was right up front, if my mother said we're getting out of here, I would have been fine because I was I had never seen anything like and that. And you I stuck was, it out? Y- yeah, we did. And I, I remember I talked to my mother about it years later. She goes, yeah, I was definitely thinking this might be a little too adult <laughs> for your younger brother. But, you know, at the end, I mean, I thought it was a good movie. It was, a good- <laughs> it was well acted. Yeah, my mother it turned it. out fine. Do you know where that Scarface house is? Uh, no. It's in Santa Barbara. Really? I, I didn't realize that. And it, uh, it recently uh, went up for sale. And I always look up stuff on Scarface so that came into my little big brother thing on the side and I clicked on it yeah it went for like crazy money but I always thought that that was somewhere in like Miami what or- do you think the cultural fascination is with Scarface what is what is, what is the cultural because it, it I feel like every college kid you know has like a maybe not so much now but at least when I, when I went to college which is still very long after Scarface you know like so many people had a Scarface poster and right. there was the Tony Montana and you know like what 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 is the culture I remember person? Patrice O'Neill rest his soul he did a uh he did this hilarious thing one time on Opie and Anthony talking about how like Fight Club was like white guys like Scarface or something like I feel like Scarface like the little amount of rap that I listen to, like that is like – that's their Star Wars, it right. seems. Like they <laughs> relate – and I think it's just because it's a guy who had nothing. He did what he had to do. Survive, yeah. He didn't take any shit. Right. And then he had like – you know, and they allegedly – I remember him, one of those guys saying how like, you know, there's the blueprint on how to get out of there and all that. So, I mean, I, I mean – I'm just a white kid from the cul-de-sac areas of uh, suburbs, so I don't know. I liked it because it was a violent ass movie. It's a great. It really is. That's a great what movie. I liked, and I liked I liked the cars, and uh, you know I like when he was getting the Porsche and he was saying this bulletproof, that bulletproof, all that. I liked the first car he had that uh, what's her face Michelle Pfeiffer made fun of that had the leopard uh, of 
right. there's a dash of something and a little bit of something else for well, I love doing stand up and then the whole fame thing is uh, I'm at a cool level you know people don't bug me but uh, I also think like to be honest like what what fame was when I started in 92 and what it is now is completely different right back then it was just like I mean I don't know I don't I don't know my I there wasn't all these cell phone cameras and blogs and social media and just every fucking thing you did like I saw this poor bastard. He tried to be like, "Hey, man, going on tour," and he had a picture of him standing in front of like a private jet and a car and all that <laughs> shit. And then he got on a commercial flight, and someone followed him on Instagram, took a picture. That was Bow Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I wasn't trying to out the guy, but what? I mean, everybody. <laughs> well, everyone, knows. It was a big I know, story. I know, it was a big I know. Story, I know. Yeah. But I felt bad for the guy. Yeah, he's just like so much of it is like you know, is is like like that level of shit now that like. You never got busted. Like you didn't have to show that you were living that lifestyle. Everybody assumed you did. Now you got to have that lifestyle. If you don't, you got to fake the lifestyle. And and uh, then everybody's like, uh, I don't know. Everybody's like telling on everybody. If I if I followed Bow Wow on Instagram and then I saw him tweet the, and then on on, on uh, uh, Instagram or whatever, and then I saw him on the flight, I'd be like, oh man, I'd feel bad for the guy. I mean, maybe, I, would, I wouldn't want to try to like. Yes, I know, but I, and I, I, I hear what you're saying. There's, everybody I, wants their feet held to the fire until it's their feet. Absolutely, give me a fucking break. Whatever. Absolutely, but I also nobody think, ever exaggerated. No, I know, but it's all, but but also, I mean, it it is a if people recognize you, it is a bold move to to suggest this is what I am doing. If you know that people might recognize you, I mean, I, I, I guess I always just think, you know, make a joke out of it. Just take a picture of like the American Airlines and go getting on the private jet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. then it's funny. Then it's funny. And no one, no one, I don't I know. know. Whenever I see that shit, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but it is the, you know, but, 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 but it is, you know, it's also our fault for posting shit every day and trying to let people in and trying to go, this is, you know. Absolutely. So, but I can still feel bad for something yeah, like, I did. Like I that's felt bad also too. like a dude who's like, he was like a child star and shit. Like yeah, who yeah. was really sitting there thinking at the age he was putting out albums, like how do I top my last album? Right. I always have to feel there's adults behind that. Oh, a hundred percent. So he's still trying to figure out who the fuck he is and yeah. all this stuff. And everybody's like coming at him, probably saying, oh, you used to do this. Now you're doing that. So now he feels that he has to do that. That, and then he gets shit on anyways. <laughs> it's um, not, it's, yeah, it's like no matter what you do. <laughs> no matter what you do. It, yeah, you, it, that, that's the internet. No matter what the you do. The internet is you're, the you're, world's you're, largest hole poking machine. Yeah, you're going to get shit on. It doesn't matter what it is. You will always get – you could – whatever achievement you feel like you – Yeah, but dude, what was up with that tie though? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what? With that tie though. <laughs> then they'll fucking take advice because you had a three-year-old or some shit like that. Oh, is that, does that happen a lot? Oh, Dude, they, it, like parents are like it's it's. There's very few cool parents out there. <laughs> there's very few. Like what you should do when someone else says a kid, you just say, "Oh, he's a good looking kid." Oh, you know, blah blah blah. How old? Oh, that's great. Hey, just you're gonna watch the Celtics Wizards tonight. Have the decency to bring up some adult shit <laughs> rather than just sitting there. Oh, now he's scooting across the floor. I mean, just give the person a break from that. <laughs> As much as they love the kid. But the last thing you want to do is that everybody sits there and they act like they're wearing a fucking lab coat. You know, and they're a pediatrician. They sure. start telling, giving you all of this fuck. And I just sit there looking like, what is this based on? <laughs> you have a two-year-old. Like, pre-med is like four years. Yeah. Even if you were in that shit, you'd only be halfway you, through. You don't, yeah. Yeah. You might be flunking. Yeah. And you might be flunking out. Yes. And you're not in any of this. So I just, I, I fucking, I tune all of it out. And then they get quiet, and then they get weirded out, and then they'll say to me, like, yes, how are you enjoying being a father? I'll just be like, it's good. (laughs) Then they probably walk away, like, he's not engaged. I don't understand. Yeah, we we can't hang out with him anymore, and then that's perfect. I almost said the dumbest thing to your parents. When when you you introduced me to them, you didn't immediately say they were your parents, and I almost go, oh, these are your parents? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, your no. wife is black yeah no those are my wife's your parents, parents are yeah. the whitest people in the world yeah, and no, you are they, the whitest uh... guy in the world and it wasn't I, would, I it wasn't well, she I wasn't... could have had a different strokes upbringing you have no idea <laughs> they, those true. could have been the Drummonds that's very true but it wasn't I, it wasn't something I was trying to say to be funny or anything like it was just a very sincere like oh are these your parents and then I caught myself before I said it and I went back to the table to lid and I go I almost said the fucking dumbest thing and embarrass myself. But I, I could have had. What if? What would that? If I had like the oldest manager team in L.A. You know, there's still a couple of them left. Out I there. guess there is still a couple. Yeah, there yeah. is still a couple left. But it was really nice. Do, they, do your parents enjoy being grandparents? 
Yeah, yeah, no. We, I come from a big family and everything, so they're uh, – I mean, I think that that's what it was all of these years. Despite what you're achieving at your job, if someone doesn't do your job, it's like they can only give a shit about it so much. Right. So this thing, having a kid now, now I can understand them on a whole other level. Now And, they, and of course, they instantly know that I can understand m- them more. Um, the way they understood their parents more than once you have a kid, then it becomes like this, ah, this kind of like, oh, this is what life is for you. And now it's this for me. I'm not saying that that's what life is and you have to have a kid. God knows there's too many fucking people out there. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that now becomes this shared experience in reality that we now have something more that we, we can, uh, just relate to on different subjects. Whereas before, you know, I was like their forty-seven-year-old teenager who was going. <laughs> this crowd just, you know, because they're your crowd. You're performing no, for I, your I feel crowd. Like a few times, if if I laugh and people are laughing at the sound of my laugh because they listen to the podcast, like I always say, that, okay, all right, though they're just they're laughing because they know me. I know, I know that that isn't, but I, I I know when the thing is ready, when it's really like, um, you know, uh, what. It's a different sound laugh when they're laughing, laughing, rather than being like, oh, this is the guy I saw in the thing, and now I'm looking at him, and I'm excited. So a recognition laugh versus a, a gut bust Yeah, laugh. like a serious, like, there's, a, there's like two or three bits I got going right now in my act that, like, uh, I did one, and um, I, I made another comedian kind of double over when I did it, <laughs> and I was like, all right, if I get a comedian doing that, then I, I'm obviously, a, I'm either on a good road or I'm going to have to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of can't. Somebody. You almost can't trust it when a comedian laughs too hard. You're like, did I just yeah. say something really offensive? Because I know, because comic, we we all laugh. We laugh. I always feel like comedians laugh in between the laughs. Right, 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 um, right. That's the shit that they find funny. Where the other stuff is just too pedestrian. Like, yeah, yeah, right. set a punch. I get it. I get it. But they'll laugh at other stuff if there's something extra mean in it, mm-hmm. or uh, there's an element of failure to the joke. They'll laugh. <laughs> you know, it's, it's 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 that type of stuff. Yeah, that's completely true. True, or if it's or if it's something that is you know with the audience is completely taken aback by the other comics will laugh. Oh, that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite things. That I just love when a comic goes up and just has this belief, like, right? Am I right, people? And everybody's just like, no, not at all. You couldn't be more wrong. And just watching them feel that because I know what that is. That is like it's a concussive hit to your chest. Mm-hmm. Um, when that starts happening, like I don't like watching people bombing out of control. Like, but watching a friend of mine going up and bomb—that's the the one thing I, I I do miss about you know back in the days where uh, you know when we were coming up. I mean, we used to—I mean, we were so like the group of guys I came up with. We were just so uh, just bad to each other. It was just bad. <laughs> we, we were just detrimental. When I really look back, we. <laughs> We were always go, oh, we're helping each other out because we're toughening each other up. And it was just, it wasn't like, I, it was just, it was just sort of really mean. And it was the funniest guys I've ever met in this business. And we didn't write one fucking joke together, no sketch, no script, nothing. We basically hung hardcore eight years and just sat and just trashed each other <laughs> nonstop, nonstop. Yeah, those jokes, sometimes those jokes where, and the more you do it, I feel like the less it happens but every once in a while where you just take a swing so hard that the bat like wraps around and hits the other side of your face and the, oh, yeah. the audience will collectively say, listen, this happened very fast, but we all got together and we are 100 percent. Yeah, you unanim- <laughs> okay. went right by it. Things are OK. Things are OK. But I'm very comforted by the fact that you're 48 and you just had a baby and my wife wants to have two kids and she wants to start like next year. And of course, that terrifies me. I'm like, wow. Well, I mean, I don't think I could have had a kid when I was younger. There was no way I, I, I was yep. responsible. You, you could have done it. I could have done it. And we wouldn't have been good dads. No, 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 that's, no, no. That's how I look at it. So it's, uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. I lived my youth into my golden years, and now I'm living <laughs> – I'm doing like a Tarantino movie yeah. where you switch it around a little bit. So then uh, now I'll, I'll live the second act in the third act of my life, I'm just I gonna, I'm going to have to be comfortable with the fact that some places I go, people are going to go, oh, is that uh, – are you with your grandpa? No, like, no. they're not going to think that. No, because you stayed in shape. I did stay in shape. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. When people say you're, to me like you're an old dad, it's like, dude, I can do more pull-ups than most fucking 28-year-old dads. <laughs> 
Okay, <laughs> and I'm not talking about L.A. dads or New York dads. I'm talking about on-the-road dads. Yep. Those people you meet after the show, and you're like, oh, I got this guy by like five years. You find out they're 12 years younger than you, and it's like, right. what the fuck happened to you? And it's just like uh, – and, th- and the thing is, too, is, is once you uh, – it's hard to get it back, man. Like if I can tell anything to anybody, it's just keep – do something every day active, even if you just stretch – because just the level of misery that your fucking life is going to be. Well, I mean, it's <clears throat> you know when you see when you see people who are elderly and they they can't really move and everything's sort of frozen. It's you know yeah. That's what I was. I was always and all afraid. they can do is waddle over to their keyboard and write something mean to you and me. <laughs> just because we still have movement. <laughs> I, I see, did you see the Did you see the Logan movie? Did you see the last Logan movie? I don't know what that is. Okay, no, it's, it was the Wolverine movie. His name's Logan. Logan, yeah, his real name is Logan. Logan, what? It's uh, a good name. Lo- Logan is—I ju- don't know. That's the char- that Logan is the character Hugh Jackman played. It's—it's uh, it's not his real name. His real name is is James Howlett. But anyway, it- is James Howlett his uh, alter ego? James Howlett was his birth name, and then he became Logan. Bit by a Wolverine. He rabbit. was not bitten by a Wolverine. A radioactive uh, no. pheasant. <clears throat> no, no, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> you're thinking of pheasant man, but I think uh, it. That movie is interesting because it's kind of at the end of his life, and he's kind of lost his he's lost the majority of his of his regener, regeneration powers, and that's what it starts to feel like as you get into your thirties and when you're young, you just you bounce back, yeah, and then you take it for granted, and then you get in your thirties and you're like ah, you know, and then you you just get a little less in shape each year, and then after five, seven, ten years. It incrementally is just like, what the fuck yeah, no, happened? You, but you can't, you can't give in to buying the bigger clothes. You have to walk around in the shame of tight clothes. <laughs> and you just be so uncomfortable in your pants that eventually something's got to give. Okay? And they're not going to let you walk around with your button and zipper undone like you're in some <laughs> fucking rock band in the 80s. That's not going to work. A-list comedian doing half his act. I remember that. Yeah. So then by the time I came along, the bar was dropped down lower because Comedy Central was fucking giving them out like, you know – candied cigarettes right and these half hour specials so i was one of the guys they're like all right we're running out of guys let's give it to the fucking redhead weirdo <laughs> so i did one and i remember like a year earlier that that uh that show mtv cribs had come out mm-hmm. so i had a bit about mtv cribs and greg Geraldo, rest his soul he had a bit and ours was so similar it was fucking eerie and like i remember i think i did it and greg got off stage with the cell and greg's like dude he goes he goes, I'm not fucking with you. I swear to God, you know you can trust me, but I have the exact same bit. And I, li- I go, yeah, Greg, obviously, I know, I, obviously, I, I know you're not, you know, I, I know who you are. I know you wouldn't do that or whatever. So, and we had both, I don't know, we both needed material at the time. So we made this sort of agreement that we would both just do the, the bit on the road. Because it was a generic like, oh, yeah, I'm watching Britney Spears in a fucking helicopter as I'm sitting on a fucking air mat. I mean, it's the, mo- the most obvious, you know, angle that you would take on that because right. we were young guys when we did it. So um, I go to do my special and I forget that conversation. Oh, no. <laughs> and I do the bit. Oh, no. And then he ended up getting a special like a year later. He also forgot the conversation. <laughs> And he did the bit. But the funny thing was, was he did it after me. So everyone, you know, I started getting emails back then when I was on AOL.com. This is how right. long ago. I was going, guys, so Greg, Greg, just to let you know, um, there's this guy, Greg Giraldo, stealing your shit. And then I called him up. I was like, dude, did you do the fucking Britney Spears bit? He goes, and he said, oh, fuck, yeah, why? I go, I already did it on my other one. <laughs> and and I think he was laughing because everyone was thinking that he was stealing from, from me. And it was just, it was one of those things. But now that is, back then, that was like, like, I'm not shitting on these young guys today, women that are getting these specials, because I was that guy. Except back then, it, like when I started, guys at that level got nothing. And then by the time I got to that level, it was, you got a half hour. And now you get an hour. Right. And then you combine the fact that back then, even then, when I got it, you had to wait for them to tap you on the head with their magic wand going, okay, little boy, you can go live your dream now for half an hour. Now, comics get to decide, oh, I'm ready. This is a special. This is worthy yeah. of being a special. So I'm a little concerned where, like, um, you know, as a fan of comedy, like, if, like, Chappelle or Chris Rock puts one out or Louie, like, I want a month to take that in. You know, see it, think about it, be affected by it. 
But now, like with that, there's a new one coming out every week. It's just like, it becomes like, like uh, that that thing with like Lost. Remember Lost? Yeah, where it was just right. speeding train stronger than a silent E. What the hell the fuck did it go? Stronger than a silent speeding, E was you're, you're talking about speeding Letterman. Bolt. Letterman, from... speeding, speeding bolt. Because they ripped that off, so I always right. fuck it up. Superman. Able to leap capital T in a single bound. <laughs> it's Letterman. Letterman. It's a word. Letterman. It's a plan. It's Letterman. Letterman. I love that you remember Letterman. I love that. Yeah, that turning the company. something back into a something. But when somebody there would be a word and they take a letter away. Yep. You yep. know, turning yep. the something. I can't think of an example. Into something, and then he, he comes in and he would put the, he would take the letter off his shirt. And it was actually it kind in. of brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah, he was a nerdy athlete. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to be watching a lot of that stuff in the coming years again, so you can dust it off. Because- oh, yeah, absolutely. But I, I mean, to a certain point. But I also, my mother was like, uh, she took us to two kid movies and was just like, I'm not doing this. These movies, these movies are, <laughs> she's like, these movies are stupid. It's stupid. She took us to For Love of Benji, which is a movie about a dog. And then she took us to uh, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, which was about a, a love bug, mm-hmm. you know, the Disney uh, franchise. Yep. yep. And it was somehow beating Formula One cars. And, <laughs> well, uh, because he had a lot of heart. He had a lot of heart. He was, That's a, right. he was a sentient vehicle That's right. that could open his hood and communicate with his wipers right. and his lights. And, and they Benji- had two drivers, which is more weight, which everybody knows in racing. You want to take out all the extra <laughs> weight. And for some reason, they had two drivers. Everybody else had fucking one. So after that, she was just like, to hell with it. Then we just went to like... Uh, we went to some vampire movie like during the disco era, and they tried to combine like disco and the vampire thing. And I remember in the end, he... He finally bites the woman. She agrees to become a vampire, and she flies away as a bat. Yep. And he's like, "I appreciate you doing this." And she's like, "Ah, you know, I could never get my shit together before." N- that was uh, that was George Hamilton and Susan St. James. In uh, that movie was Love at First Bite. Yes. Mm-hmm. Richard Benjamin. Wow, was in I could that never too. remember that, dude. Good Richard f- Benjamin was in that too. And then I remember that the they took us to see all the war movies, and then we saw we saw like Taps and all these great movies, and then. Uh, me and my older brother convinced my mother to take us to uh, to Scarface when it came out. <laughs> and uh, I was about 14 or 15. And my youngest brother was like nine. Right, well, at least, okay. He yeah, was, my youngest brother was like nine. And I remember after the chainsaw scene, which was right up front, if my mother said we're getting out of here, I would have been fine because I was just, I'd never seen anything like and that. And you I stuck was, it out? Y- yeah, we did. And I, I remember I talked to my mother about it years later. She goes, yeah, I was definitely thinking this might be a little too adult <laughs> for your younger brother. But, you know, at the end, I mean, I thought it was a good movie. It was, a good- <laughs> it was well acted. Yeah, my mother it turned it. out fine. Do you know where that Scarface house is? Uh, no. It's in Santa Barbara. Really? I, I didn't realize that. And it, uh, it re- I mean, I don't know what he made of I actually, Somebody actually bought it for me. There was another – I worked with a comic on the road and he goes, yeah, dude. That's what it was because I was so – in the in, during that time, I was so fucking like – it wasn't even that he did it. It was just like – because all my other ideas, oh, oh, that's already in development. Oh, that's already been done. Fucking Eddie Murphy had something like that 30 years ago. It's just like everything I came – I couldn't come up with anything fucking original. And then I was just like – I was just digging deeper and deeper and I, I was like, now this – there's no fucking way. I was just talking shit. I wasn't going to do it. And the fact that he actually did it, it was actually kind of depressing. I was just like, ah, oh, God, I'm well, that you know what, guy. Because that one's real personal. Because that's not just, oh, wouldn't it be crazy if we mashed up star- like two things that everyone knows? That's like right. a very personal, this is part of your life. You play drums. You see these instructional videos. Dude, like, if it's- you can find some of those old videos, then the guitar ones are great. They got, it was called Hot Licks. And this is back before Nirvana and all those guys came along and all of a sudden doing a guitar solo was like, you know, kissing your sister or something. All of a sudden you couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and, I mean, you used to be so... Yeah, you used to be totally normal. You know, rock stars <laughs> would marry their second cousins. Um, they, uh, they had all these guys that would just show you how to do all this shit with the whammy bar, making it squeal and all that. But like they, it got so bad and like the, by the end of the 80s, it's like your guitar had to kind of match your outfit. Like yeah. uh, you'd have like these like – I'm not going to say the guitarist, but there was a guy who had like this sort of greenish guitar and then like it, the pattern that he had on, on the body oh, no. of it matched his boots, <laughs> matched – he had the same thing on his boots. He had it on his belt. He tucked his jeans into his boots so you could see his boots matched his guitar, which matched his belt. 
It was like rock star Herb Tarlick. If, if, you, if you ever watched WKRP, it was, uh, it was something. But Anything I, that makes you go, huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, it was just. Yeah, you got to do that. Just too much thoughts. So. Well, everyone should watch Jefferson for Family May 30th. Yes. And, ten, uh, ten episodes as opposed to six, which I was trying to talk about earlier. Was I was trying to get to that. I was just saying. That's why we only did six the first time. Got it. Cause, and I don't even think they would have given me the show if Vince Vaughn didn't come along to the uh, – with the pitch meeting so thank you to him and thank you to all everybody that I mentioned and anybody that I might have forgot uh, and uh, really proud of this season May 30th uh, on Netflix and if you haven't watched it yet you'll have 16 to watch and I hope you find it as funny as we do and Bill also That's has it. a podcast yes called the, the uh, Monday, Monday Morning, morning podcast. Monday Morning Podcast the Monday Morning Podcast and I also have the Thursday afternoon just before Friday uh-huh. Monday Morning Podcast where I just check in on you that one's only a half hour long <laughs> Um, and that's it. Other than that, I'm going to be up in Canada, uh, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, and Regina. Nice. Over the next – and I'm driving the whole fucking – then once after Winnipeg, I drive the whole thing just because I like knowing it exists. It's a nice drive. I mean it's like that whole area is just – it's just – it's real nice. I don't know. People ever up there is like, dude, it's nothing but fuck. <laughs> but I saw Lewis Black do it. Yeah. I saw I've, – I've seen – but you're talking like the best of the best. But like uh, – yeah. I, I would not want to face that challenge. Some of them just go to Vegas. It's like some of them just kind of go, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to go be in one place. Yeah. I'll just go to Vegas. You know, like that's the right crowd. Yeah. And then just do that. But that, what you're saying. Then you have to invest that money wisely because there's this thing where like, then you, it's this weird thing where you, then you're famous in Vegas and you're not, you go, you're not famous anywhere else. So gamblers around the world, around <laughs> around the United States, know who you are. Yeah. But then, God forbid, you go to Portland or Seattle to do a gig, and you know those same twenty people that showed up to your Vegas show from Portland. Yep. Will show up to that show, and you're staring at an empty house. I so. saw you perform. We were eating shrimp cocktail. Yeah. Oh no. Here yeah, we go. Yep. Yep. So, but it is scary to. Uh, I do a run there, but I, I wouldn't. I would never do. Not a, like a res. Not like a two year long residency. No, I would go out of my fucking mind. Yeah, I don't think I could. I could. I could barely handle it for a week. I think I would go. No, I. I would, I, go I would go out of my fucking mind working any club for a year straight. Like I, I. What I like about this job is I have ADD massively. So like I lo- and I always hated when I had a day job and I got to the point where I'd been there for a year and I could be like, you know what? One year ago today I was standing right fucking here. And I just would always feel like a loser. So I liked, I love that every week, even though it's the same act and I'm working on it, though, I love that the background changes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a high end cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's also, it's- <laughs> rather than the same background keep going by, that, that, that becomes to me, it, be, I, it becomes like mundane. There's nothing new to see. Then I'm not thinking new thoughts. And then my, my act literally just, I just, I go into a stall and it's, nosedive after that so are you c- continuing did you take any are you taking any time off with the birth of the baby or are you yeah no i i did that but i also uh made sure i did enough i did enough and what i did was i came out of the gate doing clubs on like mondays and tuesdays or whatever mm-hmm. and letting people know that you know all right i'm gonna have a fucking napkin with some subjects and what it is what always the new hour is it's just momentum and I get on stage and like, ah, and I'm able to go for 12 minutes. And then I hang on for dear life <laughs> until the hour's up. And then the next time, maybe it's 13. And then, you know, so lately I was stuck in the 20s. And it hasn't, in the next month, it went up to like the 40s or whatever. I mean, I was still fooling them or whatever. But like, I, now I got it down where I'm, I'm, I'm loving my act. And I'm loving like the direction that it's going in. And I don't have a bunch of baby material because it's just been awesome. And, you know... Uh, I'm excited that I am a dad, so I don't have like, a bunch of stuff going. You know, kids do the darndest things. Like, I don't. <laughs> They'll have poop any. on you. They don't yeah, care. They'll yeah, poop yeah. on your face. And They'll... then the phone rings, and I'm like, "Hey, be fine." But you don't. But you know, I love what you're saying about your 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 baby because so much comedy comes out of discomfort. And if there's nothing uncomfortable about something, then you you know. No, and I want to keep that for me. I don't want to just be like strip mining every aspect of my life you know right. what i mean like i haven't said her name or whatever you know i just i just i don't want to i don't want to do like that but that that's like that's that's my life because you don't want to give wanna, a shout it, out to some of the people that are, all the talented people on the show at this point? let's do a shout out to f is for family f is for family uh that i is a show that i do with uh vince vaughn's company wild west and uh we put the show together with the great Mike Price, co-creator of the show, Simpsons legend. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, Peter Billingsley, Mike Lagnese, and then all the great uh, voice actors. We got Laura Dern, who plays my wife. Justin Long plays Kevin. Sam Rockwell plays the next door neighbor, Vic. David Keckner, Mo Collins, Haley Reinhardt, Debbie Derryberry, Trevor Duvall, uh, Michael Kevin Richardson, and we act. Kevin and- Michael Richardson. Kevin Michael Richardson, sorry, dyslexia here. Michael K. Williams uh, is pl- from The Wire. Speaking of The Wire, plays what a, a character. What a fucking insane cast. Yes. What an incredible group of people. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what you do. You surround yourself. I saw Seinfeld say that one time about his, about his series. I, I just surrounded myself with the most talented people I could, you know, that, that I would want to hang out with. And um, that's what we've done. You know, I was in on... Pretty much all of the auditions that people had. Of course, you know, the bigger people didn't have to audition, but I was, you know, a huge fan of uh, of all of them. And uh, just watching them being in the booth, like, and just watching like everybody's different processes. They were trying to figure out the voice that they were going to do has just been the great. Like, I'm still one of my most favorite things was watching uh, Dave Keckner being Bob Pogo. And I can't even remember the line he was doing, but he was literally leaned back away from the mic. It looks like he was doing the backstroke. He was just swimming, swinging both of his arms, delivering this line as he was pretending like eat a pizza or something. And um, Justin Long, when he does Kevin, if I'm in the booth, I can't look at him if he's being mad because he, he gets like this, <laughs> this fucking look of determination, yet he's completely like, you know, there's that vacancy because Kevin's a little, you know, not the brightest bulb sometimes. Yet he is, and he is a sweet kid. But like Justin sort of captures all of that. And there's something, there's a face he makes when he's done talking, when he's mad at his dad, who I play, Frank, uh, that if I'm looking at him, I'm going to ruin the take. So, but yeah, and just, I don't know. I've, I've had such a great time with everybody on this. So it's the second season. It's 10 episodes. Last year, we only had six because um, I think it was weird. It's so it's how fast this move is, business moves. Like four years ago, for a comedian to be want to come in to Netflix and want to do a cartoon was weird. They were like, "What? Why, why would you? Why would you want to do that? Like, you don't want to do because I think that they wanted me to do more like what Louis was doing or what right. Marin was doing. Good. It's gotten real it good. Is, it is. It has gotten ten times better since I moved out here. <laughs> that just sounded really arrogant. <laughs> That's not what I meant. When I, really I, when I when, yeah, no, when I came out here. Because I moved away from here in like uh, 99 and I went back to New York and, I, and New York just felt like home. And then after, and then uh, I was there for about five, six years and I just felt like it was time to move on. And I was coming out to L.A. and I was liking it and I was fighting that feeling because I had such a bad experience the first time I came out here. Where I just, I just wanted to get on stage and grow as a comic and, and this is not the fucking place to do that. Mm-mm. And... Um, I started coming out, you know, I had a few things on TV and all of a sudden like a few doors started opening up like, hey, why don't you come down to the improv and do a set? And I'm like, I, you know, I played it cool. Like, yeah, cool. And I was just like, well, you let me on that fucking stage. So when I moved out here again, I remember standing in the back of the comedy store in the late 2000s, mid to late 2000s, it was like 2007. And I remember watching some acts that were going up and like this fucking depression literally washed over me and i was thinking like oh my god what did i do i moved back out here to this and it's not that the comics were less funny it's just it's the gym thing they get less reps so people were just tighter and more comedically fit in new york like the average guy that was okay was so much better than the la guy because they're going up three four times a night yeah yeah, exactly. It's very and, hard and, to do here. Yes. If you could do that in a week, you're like, dude, I'm fucking killing it. <laughs> so they would – comics in New York were running them out of the gym basically as they say. And uh, so – but it just took me a minute to kind of see you know, through the forest and just kind of see like, oh, that guy's good. That guy's good. So then I knew when to pop in, when to listen and when not to listen because there's always going to be the new guys um, that are figuring out how to do that. And I was a new guy. But I, I, I feel like um, – you know, guys like, you know, Joe Rogan and, uh, you know, Gerard Carmichael coming along, you know, when he, when he came along, uh, Al Madrigal. And there was all these guys that were just like true Sebastian. And they were just really like guys that loved comedy. And um, I'm missing, of course, so many other people. Then, I, and then I'm like, like a total geek fan of so many people, but they keep booking TV work. And I'm such a fan of their stand-up, like it fucking annoys me. Because <laughs> you just want to see him perform. Yeah, like stop being successful there. Is right. It, you do this and then you fucking – Get back in the club where I need you. Yeah, and I, I want to see you do stand Like uh, Fortune Feimster is like – it's like just – every time I see – like she just has this stage presence how fucking funny she is. Yeah. 
the first time I saw her that like, you know, and then I would always see her. She was working on, uh, was it Chelsea lately? Mm -hmm. And then she, I saw her on a pile of something. She keeps booking acting work. And I'm like, this is why I never see her down at the fucking club. <laughs> She's too goddamn talented. Don't let your success ruin your stand up. I know. Back there. No, but right, 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 right. Um, that's the shit that they find funny. Where the other stuff is just too pedestrian. Like, yeah, yeah, right. set a punch. I get it. I get it. But they'll laugh at other stuff if there's something extra mean in it, mm -hmm. or uh, there's an element of failure to the joke. They'll laugh. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's that type of stuff. Yeah, that's completely true. Or if it's or if it's something that is you know with the audience is completely <laughs> taken aback by the other comics will laugh. Oh, that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite things. That I just love when a comic goes up and just has this belief like, right? Am I right, people? And everybody's just like, no, not at all. You couldn't be more wrong. And just watching them feel that. Because I know what that is. That is like it's a concussive hit to your chest mm -hmm. um, when that starts happening. Like I don't like watching people bombing out of control. Like, But watching a friend of mine going up and bomb. That's the, the one thing I, I, I do miss about you know back in the days where uh, – you know, when we were coming up, I mean, we used to, I mean, we were so like the group of guys I came up with, we were just so uh, just bad to each other. It was just bad. We, we were just detrimental. When I really look back, we, <laughs> we were always going, oh, we're helping each other out because we're toughening each other up. And it was just, it wasn't like I, it was just, it was just sort of really mean. And it was the funniest guys I've ever met in this business. And we didn't write one fucking joke together, no sketch, no script. Nothing. We basically hung hardcore eight years and just sat and just trashed each other <laughs> nonstop, nonstop. Yeah, those jokes, sometimes those jokes where, and the more you do it, I feel like the less it happens, but every once in a while where you just take a swing so hard that the bat like wraps around and hits the other side of your face and the, oh, yeah. the audience will collectively say, listen, this happened very fast, but we all got together and we are 100%. Yeah, unanimously not on board with that. We are unanimously not on board with what. Yeah, but you can always just save it. Looking at you, him. save you, it. You yeah. just go now. <laughs> what are you guys all bl in the industry that I'm making fun of? You know, you can get out of it. I'm the only guy who d dips my balls in a drawer full of steak. And like, yeah, yes, you you're the only guy. Okay, well, I will celebrate my differences. <laughs> I will celebrate my differences. Yes, I was raised to tolerate different people. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, – and the L.A. comedy scene is actually – you know, the, in the country, the L.A. comedy scene is not the best. But lately, it's gotten good. It's gotten real it good. Is, it has is, it is gotten 10 times better since I moved out here. <laughs> that just sounded really arrogant. <laughs> That's not what I meant. When I, really I, when I, when, yeah, yeah, no, when I came out here – because I moved away from here in like uh, 99 and I went back to New York and, I, and New York just felt like home. And then after, and then uh, I was there for about five, six years and I just felt like it was time to move on. And I was coming out to L.A. and I was liking it and I was fighting that feeling because I had such a bad experience the first time I came out here. 